We all good? Recording yeah. audio? No, we're not good. <laughs> Something's wrong with this. Go ahead, go on to the intro. Good evening, mouth breathers. Oh, I am your host for today. Oh, my God. I am your host for today, nose breather Gant. Yeah. And today are my fellow nose breathers, Connor and Joey. <laughs> As you can see, they love my intro right now. I actually did. <laughs> <laughs> That, that was like a me you did. <laughs> I know. Right? Like a Joey I'm just intro. like, what? how can I make the most Joey intro of yeah. all time? Just like every like, convention of intros, throw that out the window. <laughs> just make some shit up. Yeah. So, how you boys been? Good. Sweaty. Sweaty. It is, it is still very hot. We've talked about summer already, but yeah. it, it is still very hot, very moist. Um, mm. It's still very. It feels like a conversation with my fucking dad. I know, right? Like, I'm just like, yeah, oh, I, gotta, I have to talk about the weather before we jump into yeah. a conversation. I mean, I mean, I, I, <laughs> like, oh, oh, it's well, yeah. By the way, you're dying, granddad. Yeah. But, but how is the weather though? <laughs> yeah, this feels, this feels like that. Yeah. I mean, like warming us up for the trash takes episode. Because I, I feel like when you're British, you just the first thing you want to do is just talk about the weather, right? Or just complain about the weather. That's just part of British culture. <laughs> yeah. It's I, I don't know why. It's 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 like everywhere. Because you, the weather I, is shit. I feel like it's a test. It's like, are, are, are we going to socialize in the normal capacity of the yeah. British standards? <laughs> we talk about British weather first. I'm like, okay, I, I'm good. I know what I can talk about you now. <laughs> or like, are we getting super Yeah, I, I get it. Because if they, if they come at me with something like way left field, I'm like, all right, you're, yeah. all right, you're a weirdo. All right? I, gotta, yeah. I gotta think about how, what's kind of come next. But like, it's, it's like the only icebreaker that's acceptable in British culture. Yeah, if, yeah. if they're saying you are having a nice day, I think I'm talking to a psychopath. <laughs> if they're just asking me how the weather is, I'm like, okay, I can I can yeah, engage I, I, in a minimal conversation, oh, I guess. that's a left field like intro. I, I thought we were going like super like, oh, so the price of gold how, recently is I, I, I think you've skyrocketing. Got, I think you have to understand the, the sheer amount of skepticism that British people have. Like asking how your day is, is, is like, is it good? And they're asking something that's good. It's and like no, it's not. Question. You're British, so inherently it's not good. So, you know, yeah. asking how someone's day was and expecting any other response and, oh, it's okay. Yeah. Is, is you know, and, and when I say you start off talking about the weather, you never compliment the weather. It could no. be the yeah. best day ever. And your British people will find something wrong with it. You know, oh, it's a bit breezy today, isn't it? And it's just like fucking 25 degrees outside, you know, <laughs> which is very hot in British terms, by the way. Mm, true. And now that I'm out there, it's perfect temperature. But uh, yeah, <sighs> how have you, what have you guys Good. been up to? Something's been on week? my mind, gentlemen. I've, I want to ask you, because I was thinking about this last night. I was turning over in my bed, wondering just- uh, Really? Oh, jeez. I was like, I was like, do I have a weird opinion on this or not? So do you read fan mail? No. <laughs> Honest <laughs> answer. Honest answer? Honest answer. No. Okay, okay. No, you have to say it like that, Joe. <laughs> no, no, You're like, there's fucking fans. No, no, no wait, 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 let, 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 let me rephrase that. It depends, <laughs> okay. I don't want to sound like an asshole. No, 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 because like, <laughs> A, a lot of fan mail I get is mm. just, sometimes you get really weird okay. fan mail. And my, my like, we have Geeks Plus for a reason, right? It's yeah. to filter out the, like the- yeah. uh, Are you talking like physical fan mail? Or are you talking like emails? Both, both. Okay. Well, I read physical letters, obviously. Yeah. yeah. But you like- get, You get physical letters? Well, sometimes I do, yeah. How do you get physical letters? How do they know what to send it to? I don't know. They just send it to Geeks Plus. Oh my God. Oh God. But like even like back, you know, during like the convention days and stuff like that, like, you know, if it's handwritten, right? Then of yeah. course I'm going to take the time to read it. Cause you know, they put some time into it. Anyone yeah. can write up an email in five seconds, mm. right? So it's yeah. like, you know, if, emails, it's different story. If, if it's more than like two paragraphs, then I'll read it. Yeah. yeah. Just, just yeah. to see what's going you on. You know, I was thinking about this. Cause I, I, I remember uh, this whole thing that happened a long time ago with this YouTuber I knew, and it was this whole stupid drama. Mm. And, uh, you know, one of the points that this uh, guy proud, uh, prided himself on was the fact that he responded to every single fan mail he got. Okay. Um, now, when you hear that as a viewer, you're probably thinking, that's amazing. That's, yeah, what, uh, what an amazing that's, guy. That's great. Yeah. As a YouTuber, when I hear that, I'm like, oh, he's a psychopath. Yeah. Like, yeah. That guy's bad news. Well, you, <laughs> well, that, like, sounds, that sounds so bad as a viewer, I know. But this but, is like, this is well, honestly one yeah, of the that's biggest- that's honest to God. It, yeah. it, it is like, if you're a YouTuber, you know that it depends on how big he is, yeah. right? Because you reach a point as a YouTuber where you're mm. like, I'm going to reply to every comment and be thankful I'm to everyone. I'm going to read all the comments. Yeah, which like, obviously we're thankful to our viewers, mm. but you get past the point where it becomes unmanageable yeah. Yeah. to like respond to everyone. Yeah, yeah which or, is why it's like the thing of, you know, I'm not saying that, oh, you can't check them. You can check yeah. them, right? But like people who are so proud about the fact that they keep up with so much of it, it's mm. like, you know, you have to wonder, you're like, that isn't healthy for anyone keeping up with that no. amount of, No. Well, I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, most of it's praise, right? Yeah. Mm. And I feel like when someone is so into hearing about, you know, oh God, I love reading all these letters of people thanking me. I'm like, yeah. Well, so you're just a massive narcissist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, what you like reading is you like reading hundreds and hundreds of letters of people saying how amazing you are. Yeah. Or how much they like your stuff. And I'm like, you know, is- And is, like, I guess, you know, self-confidence aside, right? Like it gets to a point where it's like, 
Mm. Yeah, like, even when I got like loads of physical letters, like there was only so many I could read in a day before mm. I got like, I felt like I was doing a disservice to the letters right. by yeah. just reading them all in a sequence. Cause I'm like, all right, now I'm now I'm doing what my human brain does and just spotting patterns. And I'm yeah. spotting yeah. patterns between yeah. the letters that I'm, yeah. and I'm, I'm forming a, a, a you baseline. You start to get of, numb to it, right? Yeah, you do. And yeah. I, I don't like the fact that it kind of ruins yeah. fan mail for you that you read it so I, much. I agree with that, yeah. But I was having this thought and I'm like, I was, I was thinking about it and I'm like, huh, I don't think I've ever seen YouTubers who are like, I don't fucking read any of my fan mail. I don't read any of my fan mail or anything like that. Cause people are scared to say it. Yeah. But, but I guarantee 90% of the YouTubers out there <laughs> don't read the fan mail. <laughs> I know it sounds bad. And, and this is one of those topics that I love. This is why I like trash taste. Cause we can, yeah. we can talk about this, right? Mm. And we can try kind of come at it from an angle where you can kind of explain it in a way where it's like, I hope that I don't come off as the asshole, right? Because right. it certainly sounds like it. I mean, it, I, I mean, feel, yeah. Right. No, I get it. Like, it's it's I mean, definitely it's definitely a topic that yeah, because, as a YouTuber, you're yeah. kind of scared to touch. Because on, because right? you yeah. know. A lot of the people, and I know this is so anecdotal, but yeah. I, you know, I do see the, the the line there and the connection there, where I, I've met I've met a lot of YouTubers who, uh, you know, they've uh, a few of them have fallen off now, a few of them still do it, whatever. Mm, but mm. you know, they they prided themselves on the fact they one interacted with their fans and two mm -hmm. uh, read all the fan mail and read all the comments. In, wait, interacted how so? Well, that well, okay, because that's that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> I I don't trust YouTubers who spend all their day like in their discord interacting with their community. Yeah, yeah. right? Yes. That's yes. one of the biggest red flags to me as a yeah. YouTuber that I don't want, I don't really one, want to I'm just like, what, how would you find the time to do this? Because like yeah. you have to find the time. Basically, if if you're interacting too much with your community and yeah. reading fan mail and stuff and then doing YouTube on top of that, yeah. that to me s says, you have no time to do anything else in your life. Yeah, mm. I barely have enough time to do anything else in my life. Yeah. And yeah. I had to like cut this down a lot just yeah. to make it manageable. Yeah, because because when I when I had my Discord and start, yeah. it, you know, it can be a very intoxicating feeling to feel like, oh wow, everyone's here for me. Yeah. Mm. Look at all these people wanting to talk to me. I'm so popular. I've never had mm. this before, you know, because you know, you, you cut back a year or two before this, and I'm yeah. I'm the guy who can, you know, barely get four people to turn up to a fucking event. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. so you kind of get intoxicated on, on this like almost narcissistic tendency of the fact that you love the fact that everyone wants to talk to you. Right. Yeah. And that everyone wants to come for you. And again, it's it's not I'm not trying to slate the viewers or I'm trying to It's completely different from my yeah. Discord. Yeah, well, okay. this, <laughs> I, this, I'm this, a fucking clown in my Discord. This, 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 <laughs> <laughs> this is the private versus, but even then, okay. Yeah. Right? Even though your your Discord is private, right? Yeah. They they still want your time. Yeah. Right. And so that's a that's a really difficult juggling act because you have to separate yourself to a certain extent mm. to be able to you know have a healthy relationship with it. Yeah. Because. Mm. You know, I, I could talk about this forever, but like there's there's differences and oh, audiences time, as well. I, we do, we do, we do. <laughs> I mean, okay. we, we are I, I want to stick on one topic for now, but I okay. will go into that because okay. there's a whole other thing between the differences between male audiences and female audiences, which yeah. you kind of oh, touched God. on before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and they, they have totally different things. But mm. yeah, okay, going back to the whole uh, Discord and interacting and stuff. So yep. yeah, there's, there's two kinds of interacting. There's reading fan mail and all that, where to me, reading the whole fan mail thing is a very one-sided, um, <laughs> thank, thank you very much, Ashley. For, a one sided. For my like, trash taste coffee. <laughs> I'm trying to get in the middle of something here, God. Fuck you. $29.99 plus shooting. Get it now. Go to trashtastemugs.com. <laughs> no, go, go ahead, Leon. Yeah, go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> the trash taste mug? $29.99 plus shooting. You know, I, I, I don't know, because I just sat there and I thought, man. Mm. It's so hard to bring up talking about the fact that you don't read fan mail and not sound like- Wait, an wait, asshole. what got you onto this like thought process? Like, like, did like something was, happen? <laughs> because I was just thinking back and I had like this, like uh, this, you know, that moment of realization you get in the movies. Yeah. yeah. And I've thought about this a lot. Um, and I just remember this, this, like I said, I, was, I remember the situation with this YouTuber uh, who I had kind of a weird interaction with and I didn't really like him. And I always thought mm. it was quite strange. Yeah. And one thing that uh, he did that was just bizarre is that he's one of those YouTubers who made like 500 parts of opening fan mail. Yeah. Uh, and on one part I understand because I did this because mm. for a little while I felt guilty that people were sending this stuff mm. and they weren't getting to see my reaction to their stuff. Right. But also once, once I got three episodes into doing this, yeah. I realized, okay, well, there's only so many different ways I can react to this, these fan mail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's, you know, and, and some of these stories that people would send you are so deep and really intense, mm. you know, and, and not not to take away from any of them, but some of them would be really fucking deep. Yeah. Like, and I think if very it especially feels exhausting. weird to like share that on video, right? Feels, one, it feels weird to share that yeah. on camera. And also, you know, as a YouTuber, I'm thinking when they wrote this story out, you know, mm -hmm. what do they want from me? 
<laughs> what what did they right. what did they expect when they wrote this story? Like, like what did they was want their, a response? Yeah. Or something, like what right? kind of response yeah. did they want? Yeah. And also, you know, is it impractical for me to uh, write back now? Occasionally, I'm <laughs> saying this now. I'm probably going to never do this again because I <laughs> this is probably going to be because I don't want people to take advantage of this. Yeah. Occasionally, when people did send me like really uh, touching things to my email, you know, or very like emotional things, I would reply and just be like, "Hey, man, I keep your head up or whatever." Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I would do that because, but I didn't want to advertise that I was doing that because mm -hmm. I didn't want people to think that if they sent me a sob story. I would yeah. reply being like, hey champ, pick yourself up, you know, <laughs> yeah. here's a 10 bucks, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. I, you know. You didn't want to like sell yourself as like the therapist, right? Yeah. No, because yeah. you know, I when uh, when you start doing the, the fan mail stuff, more often than not, I find that it does come to that because mm. um, that's just how it is. You know, people well, realize you respond, people I, start taking advantage of that. Yeah, because I think like the biggest difference between you and us, uh, well, at least me, like when you were, uh, basically building your audience is that your content, a lot of it revolved around fan interaction. Oh, like 80% I mean, of it. Yeah, I mean, you mm -hmm. had like fan calls and fan mails and like reading fan comments and everything yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. And to me, I've like, like I don't know how many how much fan mail you get. I probably get a lot less than what you had to go yeah. through. So like to me, whenever I get a really deep story or like a really long piece of email, yeah. like, really long email, um, that's when I do. I'm able to sit down and read it because I rarely, rarely get one of those. Most of the time, it's just like, "Can you review uh, school days, please?" Uh, I've, okay. me I've messaged Studio Wit, uh, <laughs> yeah. letting them know that you want uh, Mikasa. Uh, Mikasa and Aaron. <laughs> Fuck. You know, that's that's the kind of mail I get most of the time. Yeah. So I, it's it's like I to me it's like a it's like a nice break whenever I can see someone who actually has you know put effort into their fan mail, and yeah. that's that's to me like that's why I always end up reading it. Yeah, and it does still like mean a lot to me that, yeah. hey, I've done something for someone that I've never met before yeah. or probably never meet and yeah. I, that doesn't matter, you know? Yeah, I mean, some of the shit just like, I got real fucked up after a while because I was just reading this shit for hours on end. Mm. Like, yeah, and yeah. it was just extremely depressing, you know? Because mm. I want to help everyone out there who's who's going through shit like that. But, yeah. you know, it's just some of the, some of the stuff- You can't help just, everybody. Some of the stuff is like, I don't even know where to begin. Like, what do I even do to mm. this? Yeah. You know, like, I remember one time someone had sent me a, a thing and it was this, really nice story about their dogs, right? And it was, just give me the fucking thing. You <laughs> 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 couldn't see off camera, but Ashley was just standing with the coffees like that. <laughs> for, like, <laughs> for like two minutes. Go. <laughs> while I just like, oh God, it's, it, Connor's gonna get on a, like a really long no, yeah, like, story right it, now. <laughs> you know, there was this, uh, there was this story and I remember it, it was just so, the way they wrote it was like some kind of memento-esque thing, right? Mm. Where it was just like, I didn't know what was coming. And so she talked about how, you know, these two dogs were amazing and she's been doing a lot better. Mm. And it was like, it was genuinely like a three page letter and it was great. It was like all mm -hmm. positive. And it was like, oh yeah. So I was doing really bad in life and it was doing, uh, you know, and these, I got these new support dogs that helped me and it was amazing. And then, <laughs> I got, sorry, it's so morbid. <laughs> and then at the end of this thing, right? Of this thing that's going amazingly, she was like, oh, and then my dogs died after they got hit by a truck. And it was like this two thing of, it was like, and now it's not going so well, but I'm trying. And I'm like, what, what, what? I was like emotionally, like I was like the biggest bungee jump. It was, it was like some kind of Monty Python skit. You couldn't make this up. It was so, if this was a comedy show, you'd, you'd have said the comedy was impeccably timed. Yeah. Like this was so, and I remember it cause I was just like, what? And I was like, what that happened? happened the first time. <laughs> what happened? And I, I, you know, it's one of those things you can't help but laugh because you're like, yeah. this is so fucked. This is, so, and I felt so sorry. Yeah. I was like, what yeah. is happening? You know, some, sometimes you just have a moment you like in life where you you don't know how to react, and you just your first gut reaction is just to laugh. Wow. And I it's just to, like I had, to, just I had to reread it like three times. So I couldn't believe it. I was like, wait, what? It's, it, I think it's just like a nervous like yeah. reaction, right? Yeah. Where you just like, how do I react yeah. to this? You just I've never had writing like that before. Yeah, yeah, if this yeah. had been done in the book, this should be like award winning. This caught me totally off. I didn't even think it was going there. It was yeah. uh, not a single, there was no like hint. There was no indicator. There was no like yeah. checkbox gone. Yeah, there was yeah, no, yeah, there yeah, was yeah. no, it was all great. And I was like, what happened? Jesus. What is this? Yeah, it's yeah. like- It was like someone had, it was almost like she'd wrote in the letter, like hmm. completely like, like three days and then like waited like two weeks before she sent it and then made like an addendum at the end. Just being mm -hmm. like, oh, and by the way- <laughs> Like somebody, a footnote. Yeah, yeah just being yeah. like PS, by PS, the way. PS, they're dead. PS. <laughs> It's not good now, and yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> and then this is also this is just terrible. I don't want to. It's it's horrible to deal with that stuff. And yeah, so and it's, it's like what what does that person expect you to like react? Yeah, and so with, right? and yeah, exactly. But you know, not to take anything away from her, I do appreciate uh, her yeah. sharing that me because mm -hmm. obviously you know that was something very, very emotional, personal, yeah. right? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, mm. 
and, and, and in one hand, I appreciate it, but on the other hand, when I hear about people who are reading tons and tons of these letters and, and they love it, and it's just like, what? Like, can you emotionally handle all of this? And if you can, like, I have to go, like, are you a psychopath? Yeah. <laughs> like, this is, this is a lot, you know? It's like, imagine yeah. if you were speed running therapy for some people. Like, this is like, you're just like, you get the sob story and you yeah. don't have to get to help. Like, they just, they leave and it's yeah. like, this is horrible. This is yeah. like, I mean, I mean, I mean, I think it's it's like unfortunate that we we can't listen to everyone yeah. because like I, I got into YouTube because I wanted to like just find other. I want to connect people. Yeah, mm, I wanted to connect mm. people. I wanted to find people with the same interests that I had. Yeah, mm. which is why like a lot of the friends, a lot of our close friends in England that we had now, are like people I met through YouTube or through being fans of my content. Yeah. And through that, I I kind of like for for the for the longest time, I kind of prided myself of like you know if you're a fan, come say hi. Mm. And maybe we can be friends one day. You know who knows? And that was that was when that was manageable, right? And yeah, like right. some some of my first some of my first fans are now like some of my closest friends. Yeah. You know, one of them is going to be like one of them. Uh, every, like you know, some of them are going to be you know at my wedding. You know, that's Groomsman, that's right? yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So it's 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 gone from that to now. Like I cannot. You know, even if I, even if I'm sure there are a lot of you guys watching out there who I know, I'm and probably you know that we could be pretty close friends. We're mm. just not going to have the opportunity for that, unfortunately, right? Because most likely, most, most likely. because like to because me, because there's one of you, because there's only one of me, <laughs> and there's literally hundreds of thousands of you guys, yeah. and it's it's an unfortunate fact that I just had to like make peace with and just be like, mm. you know, this this is it's part of the job is managing kind of like my fan interaction mm. and just interacting with the amount of people you can physically and right. humanly interact with and, and I get guess, emotionally involved with. Yeah, I and guess. I guess, and it's like that massive difference between someone who has come to that realization in their career and is mm -hmm. able to manage it. And some people who are just like, nope, if you're a fan of me, you're, you're, you're not just a fan, you're a friend, you can approach me at any time kind of thing. But then they forget that the, larger they grow and the more and more yeah. of those fans yeah. you know, become friends, quote unquote, yeah. then it gets to the point where they're just like, that's just their entire life, right? Yeah, and yeah, you yeah. end up with people like how, what you were saying, that just yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that interact been, with their fans 24 seven. That could have been me, you know? And yeah, yeah, there are a lot of YouTubers out there who have- uh, Still do that? Still, who I'd say have, uh, you know, at the cost of their own channel, yeah. have, right. uh, you know, continue to do it. Cause a lot of them get really, you know, and I, I, I've seen so many YouTubers get so sucked into their Discord. Yeah. Um, and you know, I've, this is why I said it way, way back, you know, I've, my number one piece of advice is to not make a Discord server, which a public is, Discord server. Which is why we haven't made a trash taste um, Discord server. Yeah, yeah which- uh, Even though people one. have asked. Yeah, it's the, my number one piece of advice to yeah. any YouTuber because it's it's a time sink. Uh, you know, yeah. managing a Discord server, luckily now I, I don't manage it. I've got, an, I don't I don't go on there. Like yeah. I, I, post, yeah, I post updates and yeah. you know, I, people understand it now. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know, I remember when I first started stepping back from it, I would get a lot of messages being like, I can't believe you on active. That's so, yeah. so wrong. It's your discord, so you yeah. should be active. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, what would you want me to do? Do you want me to sit here and message you? So so the other 2 million people can't have a video? Like, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, exactly. do you want me to take time away just so I can I can, you, I can laugh at the meme you sent me? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> kitten Lord XD, you know, what, what <laughs> do I have to do? I, I actually had to coach Sydney through this because she yeah. actually like had, I think she had a, like a public discord and you know, at the beginning, everyone wants to interact with it's their fans. It's great in the It's start. great, it's great. It's everyone amazing. wants to interact with their fans as much as they can. Yeah. And it got to the point where Sydney thought that if she didn't do it, then people would think that she was ungrateful yeah, so that, for, that's, for mm. you know, the attention yeah. or for like, for them supporting her channel. And yeah. I'm just like, and she grew to a point where she was waking up just stressed. She was waking up and she was like, I've just got so many notifications yeah. and- like, No, me, and, me too, me too. Yeah, yeah, and, and and it was like, she woke up and for a full like month, I think she was just depressed because yeah. she didn't know how to handle everyone trying to get a piece of her attention. I'm just like, mm. look, you've got to, because because this was this was back when like, this was back when she started to, you know, kind of get a bit of, a bit of momentum. Right. And and I like, luckily she had me to like coach her through it because uh, yeah. I, I- literally had a coach, like a perfect yeah, yeah. coach. Because yeah. I was just like, look, you've got to just get past this point where you just got to realize that it is part of the job. And part of the job is just understanding that you can't give everyone attention. I know you mm. want to, I know it kills you to show everyone how grateful you are for their support and everything, mm. but it's physically impossible for one person at 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 a at a certain size, yeah. right? 
Like if someone meets me in person and uh, you know they they want to speak to me, I'll I'll gladly speak to you. As uh, you know, I'm mm-hmm. tape it. anything anything you we will talk. Yeah, and I would rather that so much more than a message through the screen. I don't know. It literally doesn't mean anything when you're yeah. messaging through it, like Discord. Yeah. If yeah. you don't know the person, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I don't even know who you are. That, I'm like, that's yeah. over here, bro. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> on. Honestly, I think like the best way to just have a casual conversation is, it, it, I mean, you can't plan it, which is unfortunate, but if you, it's, it's mostly conventions, right? Yeah. If you see us at a party at a convention or just like hang out and we look like we're just not heading somewhere, or like busy, mm. then we'll probably have time to like have like a quick I'd chat love or to, something. Man. Yeah, yeah. that's why I want to go to. And the, the quick chats are always the best. Yeah, in my opinion. and and some and sometimes you meet an interesting character and you're just like, yeah, we should you should hang out later. Yeah. You know, at, at one of the parties that we're going to or something like yeah, that. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I've had people. I'm like, yo, come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, right. It'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like, and, you know, unfortunately, that's just not something you can plan. You know, we're gonna we're obviously gonna find it creepy if they're gonna be like, okay, so uh, this person's gonna be here at this convention and he's gonna be mm. here, 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 here. I can say hello here <laughs> and uh, just hopefully, like corkboard it out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, he's gonna apply here, here, so we have to rendezvous right here. <laughs> <laughs> no, because like I've had a really weird, okay, kind of like strange right. um, evolution of like interactions now that Trash Taste has started, right? Because mm. obviously the world hasn't opened up yet, but I've now met like a few people post Trash Taste that has just been like, so like we've met in like a normal social situation. So it's just been like at a friend's party or at like mm. some kind of gathering, mm. but uh, they're like, yeah, I, uh, I watch Trash Taste. And the first thing they say is like, I, 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 I know about the parasocial, relationship thing, but like, I'll just say it up front. And like, I, I understand that there's like a difference between knowledge between what I know about you and what you know about me. <laughs> and I'm just like, this is actually really weird because I think that's the best way to handle it. Just yeah. just like acknowledging that, yeah, they, they're an active viewer and they know more about me than I do about yeah, them. Just so, admitting that like, I yeah, might yeah. like you, but I know you're not my friend. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah. So I'm, just like, yeah. so I'm just like, so I'm just like, Cool, let's close that gap then. Did, so, did, did you see the clip of uh, Felix talking about it? Uh, he, he, someone asked him like, oh, do you know Connor? And then uh, he was like, yeah, I do. He's like, yeah, what's Trash Taste? It's, it's weird. I feel like I know them, but I, I don't know them at all. Yeah. <laughs> God, is that coming from Felix yeah, as well? Yeah, like, like, Felix. Felix. <laughs> Felix, Felix like, I feel weird. I feel like they're my friends, but, I, but I've never spoken. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's great. That's yeah. Yeah. Felix yeah. is saying that. Yeah. Like, that's, yeah, the that, that's the thing, right? If Felix is saying that, then fucking everyone is susceptible to <laughs> yeah. it, right? Exactly, like, exactly. Oh yeah, so you, can't, you don't, don't feel guilty. Don't, don't feel yeah. guilty, yeah. you the know. Big, the big boss man himself, yeah. feel, it's yeah. all right. <laughs> yeah, like, the, the thing I'm trying to say is, we don't know how, how to handle it correctly as much as you don't know how to handle yeah, it correctly. Yeah. We're, we're, all fucking, we're all fucking in it's, this together. It's a very strange situation we've all found ourselves in. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, that's that's why I'm, I'm also glad that we are quote unquote like famous on the internet. <laughs> because like, you know, because like, that's that's why like if there's one group of people who are fucking sociopaths, it's fucking paparazzi, right? Because yeah. because oh, yeah. if you've seen any interview or just any documentary or any story following paparazzi, they're fucking not cases. The fucking Anthony Padilla video, like yeah. that, still blows my mind to this day. Yeah. Just like hearing just the audacity of some of these guys just being like, yeah, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, because like, if the opportunity is there, I'll take it. Yeah, because like, one what one fuck. Yeah, because one thing I'm thankful for is that because we've grown up in an age where I think a lot of our viewers. Are more aware of you know what it's like and you know social boundaries and stuff mm. like that um, because we have places like Trash Chase to talk about it but fucking celebrities back in the day they they didn't have this no. you know they were they were basically put on a pedestal and kind of like almost looked at like a commodity and mm. you can do anything you want to the celebrity you can break all kind of social boundaries and it was acceptable back in the day and that's why paparazzis were able to do what the whatever the fuck they yeah. did right yeah, it was just that like weird stigma of like oh you are famous therefore. Yeah you are open to any criticism. You are open mm-hmm. to just getting your entire private life exposed yeah. by anyone at any time. And you have no right to say because mm. that's the cost of being famous. It's yeah, like, yeah. bullshit. <laughs> that, that is bullshit. Bullshit. Like, I, I remember one time I saw a clip of Toby Maguire trying mm. to like, trying to just just go out of his driveway and just go wherever he wanted to the day. And he just got swarmed by paparazzi, right? right. And so he, the paparazzi literally were just in front of his car, like trying to like, like, like a group of locusts, right? Yeah. Trying to like snap this picture of Toby Maguire. And he like moves out slowly and he's just like trying to politely say, um, excuse me, can you, can you guys get out of the way? Can yeah. you guys get out of the way? They don't get out of the way. He moves an inch and he goes, uh, excuse me, can I'm, I'm just trying to get out of my driveway. Can, uh, can you guys get out of my driveway? Yeah. and they don't move. And then he, of course, like any human being, he fucking gets angry and yeah. he loses it. And he goes, 
dude, move out of the fucking driveway. I'm just trying to get out. <laughs> and then the paparazzi is like, wow. What an asshole. And I'm just like, <laughs> what? how up your own ass do you need to be to have this kind of mentality, Guaranteed, right? Guaranteed, the moment he started screaming, all the paparazzi just simultaneously started drooling, being like, that's a story right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Which is no, why no this clip got posted them. out, yeah. right? No, no one respects paparazzi anyway, so it doesn't, doesn't fucking matter. No. Yeah, in, t- in terms of like the social hierarchy, I believe they're like below fucking, like dung beetles, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, like honestly, zero respect yeah. for paparazzi. I mean, people would rather cockroaches in their apartment than paparazzi. Probably, yeah, probably, yeah. 100%, yeah. So I guess I'd uh, take that with what you will. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, I, I mean, going back earlier to the whole, you know, giving mm. attention, I think, uh, you know, like I remember one thing that people would say and they mm. would like, they would praise you. If you would, if you would interact with your viewers, they'd be like, "Wow, this is so refreshing." You know, big YouTubers don't talk to their audience, yeah. and, you, and at the time when you when you have like 50k subs, that probably gets to your head. You probably think, "Yeah, I am. I'm doing great. Like, I'm. Mm. Why, why can't these people interact with their fans? This is so fun. This is great. Yeah. This is going amazingly." Uh, and then you realize, uh, well, you should realize shortly after why that is a bad idea, mm. uh, because uh, then you have no free time. Like I remember specifically, and your I, content starts to deplete. Well, yeah, I remember I would spend like at least two to three hours a day mm. on my Discord like mm. answering messages, keeping mm-hmm. up with the server, just doing that. And I'm like, two to three hours a day? On, on what? <laughs> like on what? Because yeah. the, the problem is it slowly creeps up on you, right? Yeah. At, at first it was like 15 minutes of your day. Yeah. And you just get 15 minutes Fifteen minutes where you feel happy. You're like, oh, people people like me. People like people like what I do. Yeah. That's great. And then like it's slowly like five minutes gets added on like in yeah. a month. And then you do content for two years and suddenly you're wasting two yeah. hours of your days. Your two hours is just yeah. gone. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, also, you know, someone gets banned from the server. And if you're active on the server, uh, you definitely get uh, the complaint for the, the reasoning. You know, one mm-hmm. thing that I noticed when I was on the server was that like, every goddamn week, someone would come to you and be like, my friend unjustly got banned. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And yeah. this is Connor's a dickhead. Yeah. Connor's yeah. a piece of shit. He banned my friend for no reason. You check the log. The guy said like the n word like ten times, and he's like, "What? Like what? what it's just want? words, bro. What do you want? It's just words." And, and is then, is know, this how it feels to be YouTube? Yeah, <laughs> when they yeah, take yeah. down a video, yeah, like, and just- yeah, yeah. yeah, I think, I think, I think this is how you, like this is why sometimes I feel sorry for YouTube. Like, this is how yeah. they feel sometimes. If someone uploads like a, a titty and something. Like, yeah. What do you mean, bro? I, I, I can't titty. believe YouTube banned me. What an asshole! Yeah, I, you know, it's it's there's just, you know when the Discord server starts, it's great, and mm. uh, when you have to actually moderate a Discord server, that's where it gets hell. Yeah, uh, and then you know. That, you know, when you bring on moderators, you know, some sometimes I remember my moderators sort of sometimes start like infighting, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. What is this? I, I'm I'm just trying to I'm just trying to make a server where I can thank my fans, and now, now it's turned into a whole, uh, you know, uh, House of Cards esque situation. What's going on here? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? And uh, there's just so many downsides to it, mm-hmm. and um, I, I just oh, it's such a it's such a complex situation, and um, I feel like if you haven't experienced it, it's so hard to think about all the possibilities of stuff that comes up. Mm. Yeah. Cause I didn't think about any of this shit. And even when I was in the middle of it, I didn't know what what could go wrong, mm. you know? Hey everyone, it's me, Joey, and just Joey. The other boys are not here, but I'm here to tell you about the sponsor for today's video, ExpressVPN. Internet service providers know every single website you visit, and ISPs can sell this information to ad companies and tech giants who then use your data to target you. You don't want to be targeted, I don't want you to be targeted, and that's why ExpressVPN is here, baby. ExpressVPN creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet, so your online activity can't be seen by anyone. It's as easy as closing the bathroom door. You just fire up the app and click one button and you are fully protected. Plus, ExpressVPN is rated number one by CNET and TechRadar and it works on phones, laptops, even routers, so everywhere you share your Wi-Fi can be protected. I use ExpressVPN to watch anime on Crunchyroll because Crunchyroll is blocked in Japan. I can't believe they would do that to your boy. So you can secure your online activity today by going to expressvpn.com slash trash taste. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash trash taste to get three months of ExpressVPN for free. Back to the episode. Do you guys still read YouTube comments? Uh, first day, yeah. Yeah, first day. Right. I kind of, I kind of want to get the consensus of the feeling, yeah, uh, from the viewers, yeah, yeah, because um, I feel like the people who watch on the first day are your core audience, yeah, yeah, and, and those are the people I care about hearing about the mm-hmm. most. You know, I want to know what my the people who watch my videos day one think, because um, you know when the video starts doing really well and it goes outside of your audience, mm. it's when you get really weird comments, yeah, you know, like uh, the ones that turn into not English, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> like my rent a boyfriend video mm. like blew up. I knew I knew it was going to do well because mm. the, the, yeah. the, the, it's very good clickbait. Like mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. you see that. Yeah, I like, saw that. And I'm just like, this is this is going to be a bang. Even yeah. if the video was me, oh. 
Oh. Even if the video was me just going to like a Denny's and just like texting a guy and saying I rented it, I'm sure the video would have done a million views anyway, just because the thumbnail and the title is so good. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, and, and, and like I said, I knew it would. So there's some of the comments I got <laughs> on it were just like, what the fuck? What the fuck are these? And it's like, ew, is he gay? Is, that, is man gay? <laughs> Is it like, <laughs> it's, man gay. it's like, and just weird stuff. Like, oh, I bet he smells nice and all that kind of stuff. And just, you just start to get like the really strange comments coming out. So I don't yeah. really give a shit about them. Um, yeah. But yeah, definitely day one, I, I check. Sorry, I went on, I went on a whole explanation. No, 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 no. yeah. Like, yeah, for me as well, it's like day one is kind of like the consensus of like, again, it's like, it's the ones who are subscribed to you is the ones that's always waiting for your video. So it's like, yeah. you know, usually, I also don't just look at the top comments either. I always look at it from like- New, yeah, new, newest, new, newest, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, can't, you can't always look at the top comments because those are the ones like, if there's anything with constructive criticism, it's going to be buried down somewhere. Yeah. And I want to, those are the ones I want to find. Yeah, the most liked ones are usually some kind of meme that came out of the video, right? or which is cool. From, or a quote from the video. Or a quote right? from the video. And yeah, I'm like, yeah, 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 I get it. We all, we all watch the video. The, yeah. yeah. The problem is, is that I actually don't want to check the comments half the time because I don't want to check my YouTube analytics. I, mm. Yeah, that's me too. I don't. <laughs> I, 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 I literally click on the video. I'm just like, don't, don't show so, me the views. Yeah, like, show so, me the views. So, <laughs> down to the comments. All to, right. To check the comments on the YouTube app, on the studio YouTube Studio app, uh, the first thing that pops up when you open this app is your views, how the video is doing, yeah. mm -hmm. and the amount of money you're earning, and all that stuff. I don't want to see that stuff daily. And the elusive something I mean, out of ten. Yeah. Graph, We've talked about right? that. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I don't want to know how my video is doing every day. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I counterintuitively, I probably should care. Mm. You know, any expert in analytics would tell you that you should be checking it and mm. studying it. Yeah. I've, I've been doing YouTube for like five years off pure gut feeling. And yeah. I, I think I've been doing all right. I think I think I understand what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I don't, I don't, I don't want to look at that. Um, I don't care how much it's making. I don't I don't care how many views it's getting. I just I just want to read the comments. So I, I don't check it that often because I, I have to see that shit. Yeah. And so I kind of, for me, it's just like, is it monetized? Good. I don't need to see anything else. <laughs> yeah. I'm satisfied. Yeah, I, yeah. I kind of, I'd say I check every two to three days now. Really? Yeah. Once, yeah. Yeah. Cause like, I, I, I think I check on the first day and then that's just it. Like, I just check, is this, are people enjoying this video? That's, mm. that's all I need to know. Yeah. And yeah. then I just kind of leave it at that. But I remember before when I first started, you'd like, there was a full fucking week, right? You, I call it the honeymoon period where you were just, you were so proud of this video and you just like kept refreshing the comments. Mm. Like, and you're just like, come on, there must be a new comment. There must be a new comment. And that like, that like, that, that period was like a full on week for me before when I, when wow. I released the video. And then the longer you do YouTube, the lower, the lower that honeymoon period is yeah. until right. like, it's like, it's different. Cause if you're really, if I'm really, really proud of a video, I'm still like checking more comments than in like some other videos, mm. for example. Mm. And I was wondering like, is it the same for you guys or is it just like the same for every video now? Mm. Like how much, how, how much do you guys see YouTube as a job? Is it just like a completely <sighs> a job now? I mean, I'd be lying if I said it, it's no, it's no longer a hobby. I mean, like, if oh no, it, yeah. it is no longer a hobby. Yeah, it's no Absolutely. longer a hobby. Absolutely. If it if it wasn't for, uh, I think the job is what makes me have to upload weekly. Yeah, mm. I wouldn't upload weekly if it was on my own bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I would do once a month. Because yeah. <laughs> I love, like some videos I, I, I absolutely adore making. Like there's mm -hmm. this one video that uh, is uh, been in the, I can't talk about it yet, but it's been in the works, a lot of approvals, a lot of, a lot of uh, things have had to have been done to get yeah. this video done. Yeah. But I'm hoping that when it comes out, it's gonna be amazing. And it's it's been like a passion project for a while. And that that's just like something that I would have done. Yeah. You mm. know, mm. regardless, like mm. yeah. even if it didn't make any money, even if it wasn't my job, like I would have made that N like regardless, like yeah. nothing. Mm. And so that's amazing when you get that, but that only comes around, I feel like twice a year at most. Yeah. You get like a truly, yeah, most, yeah. a truly passionate, really amazing idea. And everything seems to be <laughs> kind of working. Mm. Yeah. You know, you get all the approvals you want, you get all the go aheads, you get all the, you know, cause you know, especially now it's, we, we do a lot of filming outside of our house in Japan, you need a lot of approval stuff. It yeah. takes a long time. Yeah. Um, before it was just kind of like, how many hours can I put in on this thing? Yeah. Now mm -hmm. it's become the case of, can I get the right approval? Yeah, Cause sometimes you just have to have a passion project. That was like, I think that was me and like yeah. the fate timeline I did. Cause like, how, when, when did I first mention that? Yeah. Like it was like a over a ago. year ago. Yeah, right? And like it just got released a like a few weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cause I'm just like- Was that a passion project or a job? Sorry. Oh, that was a passion project. Okay, right. yeah. Cause I'm just like, are, do really people, are, do people really want to hear someone explain fate <laughs> in 30 minutes? Like, well, like, answer, like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I had so much fun filming that, and I'm mm. just like, I, th this is just a fun thing to work on. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think everyone enjoyed it, except for the fake community for some reason. They saw they got salty about it. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, I mean, like, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta take. 
you got to take with a grain of salt sometimes. Uh, being an anime YouTuber, you can very much piss off a lot of different anime fandoms. No. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's to me, it's part of the job, right? Because I, I feel like, you know, I feel like with you, you're more of like a personality with like, who sells himself on just, you know, I'm a guy living in Japan and I like anime, right? Yeah. Whereas I, I think me and Joey have had our fair share of experiences where because we maybe say our opinions of an anime or maybe like we've gotten to a point where we can have like an effect on the community, then sometimes, yeah. you know, sometimes people can be unhappy with what we say. I mean, yeah. I, I, Un unhappy is a, is a very loose I'm, term. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm being very civil with the words yeah. I use right now. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm your, I'm your guys' friend, obviously. So I understand, yeah. you know, where you're, you're, you guys are coming from. And uh, yeah, sometimes I feel like, fucking hell, man, this guy's being real harsh on you guys. <laughs> yeah. I see some of these comments, I'm like, Jesus Christ, you just made a video about fate. Chill out, bro. <laughs> yeah, I know. Chill out, why do you have to be so mad? I mean, that's <laughs> why, that's like, I, I'd be lying if I said like, that wasn't one of the big reasons why I don't make videos on like popular or big franchises anymore, because it's yeah. like, it doesn't matter if I'm praising the shit out of it. It doesn't matter if I'm saying an unpopular opinion or whatever. Uh, the fan base is going to get pissed off either way, just purely because of the fact that I made a video on it. Yeah, I think because I never really, I don't know, whenever I made videos about stuff, it was always like the kind of uh, BL communities and they were always just really grateful that anyone was making videos about it at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's weird, right? Cause like, I, cause I've also like slightly stepped into that when I made a video on killing stalking. Yeah. And that was one of the most like, praised by yeah, the dude. community videos I yeah. ever got. I was like, I thought I was gonna get shot. Uh, hand to God, bro. BL fans are like the best fans ever, man. They are yeah. so supportive of anyone getting into BL in yeah. any capacity. They don't yeah. really give a shit if you get shit wrong. They're just like, we're just glad that someone's appreciating it. Yeah, yeah. because it's, it's so niche. Right? So, yeah. And some of it is like amazing work that just gets overlooked because mm. it's gay. Like, yeah. it's, I mean, yeah. you know, so it's amazing. And, uh, you know, seeing some of these communities, you know, uh, there are a lot of, uh, uh, some shonen communities that get very defensive. Uh, the face one, yeah, because I remember Gaunt, Gaunt, Gaunt did this video. Uh, I'll talk about it, because okay. Gaunt, Gaunt doesn't want to say anything. But I, 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 the people were being so harsh to Gaunt. They were like, uh, Got made this video about the fake timeline. They're like, oh, some things are wrong, or oh, how dare he get, you know, make this video that's just terrible and incorrect in so many ways. And I'm like, yeah. Bro, chill out, man. And I think some of these were the smaller YouTubers, I think they were getting- I'm like, do you want to make a video on it? Go ahead. Well, I think they have. And they were just like, it's not as good as mine. It's like, the, the point is, is you have to understand is that, you know, if you're a fake YouTuber, if you're a specific YouTuber, you're mm -hmm. going to be more focused on the oriented details of it. Yeah. When you're a more general YouTuber who covers more, more topics, you know, and you're covering a wide span of things, you're going to be focused on entertainment. Yeah, right. And, and I feel God's uh, video in a lot of ways was more entertaining. When I watch God, right? I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I'm, I'm not giving I'm, a yeah. shit. I'm not watching it for fate law. I, I couldn't give a fuck. I, I just want to watch if something funny. If I wanted to funny. see fate law, I would go onto the wiki. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I want something. I want something. <laughs> I'm just being real. I want something funny, you know. So yeah. when I saw people, when I saw people, you know, I feel like I'm just defending my friend. <laughs> me, As me we fight. should. As yeah, we should. Keep, keep, keep going. This is, yeah. this is this is the rare time where we where we've like got each Supporting. other's back. I guess <laughs> we got you, homie. When we're not shitting on each other for once. What's the hate, homie? I'm feeling weird right now. It's like Connor's defending me? Yeah. Oh, what's, uh, what's, what's, what's going yeah, on? I, I, I saw this and I, I wanted to, I wanted to, you know, you were you're gonna hold your friend back. Like, no, 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 don't do I'm gonna reply because I'm like, bro, you're missing the entire fucking point. Yeah. It's not to make a video that's correct about Faye. It's to make a video that's entertaining about Faye. Yeah. The point is that, yes, it's not gonna be 100% correct. If it is, fantastic. God's yeah, done a yeah. great job researching. The point is, is that, yeah, you, that might annoy you that some details are wrong and that you've put in all this hard work and your video is not gonna get as many views. Mm -hmm. But by, by making a video about Faye, uh, you're giving an, an avenue for more people to get into fate, yeah, right? Yeah. Which, you know, the, when someone big makes a video about something that you do, it's great because you get a kick down effect, mm. whether you like it or not, you get that effect. Yeah. You know, there's the fate uh, people who made videos about it are gonna get views from that video because yeah. guess what's gonna be recommended on a fake video? Fate. Yeah. Um, and it was just very, I don't know, it, it's just another case of uh, people just wanting to take shots at the big guys. And I don't know, I've never really had to deal with it. So I, I'm all right, but I yeah. feel bad for you two because for some reason you I'm, guys are like punching bags for a lot of people. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know why. I, I think it's weird because I, I, I obviously never intended this, but I think it's just because we are seen as kind of, kind of like pseudo critics or whatever. Like, yeah, I, I don't know, like, because I don't see myself as anything of the sort. I just see as myself as like one guy giving an opinion. Yeah. And I've that's and, and I've said that so many times in videos, but the moment you say that to the reviewing and critic fan base, they're like, oh, he's just trying to be a critic. He's just trying to be a reviewer. He's trying to take out jobs. And I'm like, <laughs> I no, I, I'm really not. 
I just want to make a video on this because I'm passionate about it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it I, it's like, I, th I think there's there's two things, especially in the anime community, because the anime community grew up from being like a very niche, small community, right? Mm. So sometimes like, sometimes I will make a video or I will title my video in a certain way because I do it with the assumption that the person watching it knows nothing about the topic I'm talking yeah. about. And the thing is because anime fans were and still are, especially in niche communities, very, very dedicated to whatever niche or whatever fandom that they are a fan of, mm. they get, yeah. I wouldn't say very defensive, but at least like they are very judgmental about yeah. any kind of content that make, gets made, especially like, well, I mean, we talked about fate, but like especially Shonen community. Oh yeah, I, know, I don't I know, know what it is about Shonen community that is they are just so competitive with one another. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like, well, because I, there's so many of them as well right? yeah, at, at yeah. this day and age. Like you say, you say an opinion. You're like it's just basically impossible to have an opinion on any any singular shonen show, right? And uh, it's 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 especially difficult, especially like if you just make a tweet or something, or if you say I'm enjoying X more than X. Well, people people will, people will like take those words and be like, "What the fuck did he just say?" Dude, no I, fucking I, way. I remember I tweeted out ages ago saying like, you know what? After all these different manga that I've read from like all the popular stuff to yeah. like the niche stuff no one thinks about. At yeah. the end of the day, I'm always gonna go back to Shonen Jump. Yeah. And the Shonen Jump like community got on my ass for it. Be like, I can't believe you're discrediting Shonen Champion and Shonen Sunday. And I'm like, I literally praised you guys. What do you want yeah. me? To, what more do you want but, me to say? But the thing, but the thing I've noticed, right, is that this is I, for some reason it's it's for the most part only com only contained in like the shonen community and the shonen culture yeah. like for example i let's i'm the isekai guy right yeah. so let's say guys i prefer re-zero over no game no life nobody bats <gasps> an eye <laughs> no nobody bats an eye yeah, yeah. i say i prefer demon slayer over, uh, I, I say i prefer demon slayer over there fuck's sake i say i prefer demon slayer over <laughs> demon slayer demon slayer God, this is how such a, I say such a controversial XC. opinion that yeah, his yeah, brain I, is literally I, like, stopping. Like, my, my, my brain's like, don't say it. Don't say it, don't stop, say it, stop, don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> I say I prefer My Hero Academia to Jujutsu Kaisen. Everyone loses their mind. Yeah. I don't, by the way. That, that was just that was just a that was just a random quote that I just generated. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. that's gonna turn the internet on fire. But of right? course, someone's gonna take that out of context and be like, "I can't believe Gant said that." <laughs> yeah, I think it's nobody respects my opinion. So <laughs> it's kind of uh, no. That's what I, I want. I, I don't. I, I don't yeah. want people to I don't want people to take my opinion that seriously. Whatever I say, no one really bets an eye. They're like, "Oh, well, I guess yeah." Connor has never had a good opinion, so it's whatever. But I want that at this point. Like, like I get it that, you know, probably, I appreciate- Probably cause, I, cause I've never really criticized shows. I just kind of say, I like it or I don't. I've yeah, never really yeah. gone in. I think it's when you've criticized shows, people mm. get there. People start to uh, probably in some aspects value your opinion. Which, you know, which I respect. Which is up to them, which I is up to them. Yeah, I respect in a lot of ways, but at the same time, it's like, there are some people, there's a difference between respecting and understanding an opinion and taking that into consideration and also basing your entire life around that person's opinions. Yeah. You know, like I e even me, like I've I've tried to talking about anime content. I've tried to not be so negative, or like I've I've tried to like only focus on things that I do like and mm. I, that I want to highlight, right? Because and that's I, a big difference. Than God. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I didn't used to be that way. Yeah. I, I used to be like you know I used to like clown on a lot of shows, but yeah. now now I at least try to try to just talk about things I like. Yeah. But even even if I just make a quick joke about something that then that one line from a video that had nothing to do with that topic or that fandom mm. that, that, you know, that one quote gets spread around on Twitter and spread around everywhere. Mm. And especially now that we stream and we're on trash taste, you, you, there are people that can just take one line out of context from a conversation that's not even to do with the anime I'm talking about mm. and just be like, oh, Gant thinks this or Gant thinks that. And I've, I, I guess it's just something I've had to learn to deal with as, yeah, I've as my content I, I, I has evolved. I could say the exact same things as you. So? Like, I could say the exact same things as you and nobody will bat an eye. But the moment <laughs> you say it, it's like, bro, shit's going down. It's like C-Dog said it's very, an opinion. It's very no strange, yeah. It's like, I, I, I said an opinion. <gasps> yeah. I, I should almost be offended that nobody gives a shit what I say. But on the, on the other hand, I'm like, great. If it means I don't have to deal with this shit. Like, I, <laughs> God, I wish I was you. <laughs> Well, I think I think part of it just comes with time as well, mm -hmm. because it, unfortunately, the longer you are on the platform or the internet, the the more quote unquote like I, I hate calling them haters because that just that just like people who dislike you. The more the mm. more people who dislike you will slowly build up. Because mm. I remember I I remember when I first started my YouTube channel and like 
I think it's like the first five years of content, most of the opinions I saw of me were mostly positive, right? Mm. But then there would be one comment that, you know, had a negative opinion of me or like one small community. And the longer you're on YouTube, the more like, the more negativity that gets built up slowly over time, just because one, your audience is getting bigger, bigger and two, a lot of the times when you get a hater or when you get something, someone who doesn't like your content, they're just gonna stay that way. And they're just not gonna give you the chance or another opportunity yeah. because they're not gonna watch your content anymore. Yeah. So that one opinion they have of you is going to remain that way mm. throughout the rest of your YouTube career, mm. right? Mm. So I, th I think it's also a thing with time as well. Cause I think a lot of big YouTubers who've been on this platform for a long time have had to deal with negativity building up over time. And I think I think there's no one that epitomizes this more than maybe Felix. And I, like, I've never personally talked to the guy, but mm. from what you've said about what he's said to you mm. and about how he deals with it, it's just like, it just seems like the most mature way where it's just, yeah. it's just something you just got to deal with, right? Yeah, honestly. Kind of, it just comes a part of the job. Do you find that it's possibly a reflection of the content you make? You know, when you're saying it's more, ne when you're more negative focused, do you find that you tend to get a more negative response from- Oh yeah, definitely. When you have, I mean, that's, when you have a controversial opinion, then mm. you all get controversial comments as well, yeah. right? Yeah. And but like, if you're always saying like shows are trash or this is bad, do you find that, or did you find that the viewers were more likely to be negative about things? Are you saying like, are they more positive now that you've swapped to being more positive about shows? Yeah, definitely, oh, okay. definitely. Okay. Like, like one, yeah. like I- I, Cause, I Cause maybe that could be it for the difference. You know? No, I mean like I, I because I, the reason I changed my content wasn't because of only because of that is because some of the content creators that I used to watch and maybe I watched back in the day, like I kind of noticed that man being being negative is just not very fun. And sure, there are shows that I don't like. It gets like. more views though. It gets more views, but and, you know, and that's the tough part. Did you, yeah. It? So did you? Because yeah. like, you know, because uh, I remember there was always like, um, fuck, what's it? Like the the completionist, or whatever, right? I don't know if you've seen his channel. No. Mm. And he always does like these top tens at the end of the year, top ten yeah. worst and top ten best games. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And he would release them like back to back. Yeah. And always the top ten worst would get more views. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 all the yeah. time. Even yeah. though they were like way lesser known titles, right? People just yeah. want to know what the worst thing is. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Ne Needle Drop does the same thing every yeah. year, whereas like the top ten worst albums of the year always did like twice the numbers of the top 10 best. Yeah, and if, I mean, I feel like top 10 worst is just better clickbait because nobody really wants to know the top 10 best or like people are less interested in knowing what the top 10 yeah. best mm. is. They want to know what the trash is. They know yeah. what. That's why I, when uh, I try and be, or I try and dunk on something, I try and choose something that's just unanimously. No, exactly, not, right? Yeah. Not Which is why top 10 worst is good because normally if it's like the worst of the worst, then, then people, there's, people won't bat an eye because it's just like, it's there to be clowned on, you mm, know? Mm, mm. Like I can clown on X-Arm all I want and people will fucking love it because it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. I mean, have you seen X-Arm? You know, I know you have, Joey. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, it's great. But like, if you, for example, have a controversial opinion of a popular show or a mm. popular thing, it's going to get a lot of views, but I feel like in the- But long at what cost? Right? Yeah, yeah. In the, in the long term, yeah. like it just, it just, makes you seem like a cynical shithead and that just hates everything. Mm. And like ev even like even if you just make one video about one popular show, but just shit on it, people are going to remember that for years, right? Oh, and yeah, I don't know true. why, but people have such long memories. You could you could you could just make like you could spend five is, years. Is there an, an example that you have in your head? <sighs> yeah, one video that people to this day still think I'm like the guy who hates Sword Art Online, mm. even though I literally made what two videos on it. Yeah, I th out of the thousands of videos I've made in my career. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, uh, even though there, even though there are so many channels I can think of that have done way more videos shitting on Sword Art Online, and yet I'm just known as the guy who's like, oh yeah, you hate Sword Art Online, right? I'm like, yeah, but I'm also <laughs> like all these other things. As did, well. you, did you really hate Sword Art Online that much? Or I mean, was it, or did you play it out for the camera? Look, okay. I'll, <laughs> I'll say it now. I played it up for the camera. <laughs> yeah, I, sure. know, I know you fucking <laughs> for did. For sure. But I thought that was pretty fucking obvious. Yeah. Like, I made a Vegeta Review 69 video yeah, on it, right? Which yeah, is like yeah. the fucking parody character I made yeah, back yeah. in the day, right? So it's like, obviously, and again, because back then when I was a lot smaller and I was still building on my channel. But that's what you do when you're, when you're, when that's you're what growing. That's what you have to do to grow. You, you think you have to be this exaggerated uh, and you have to hate everything. Right, you have right. To love yeah, it yeah. so much. Cause know? like, I remember YouTube, YouTube like, 
reviews, I guess, went through this phase where being negative was like the cool thing. Well, it yeah. was like uh, around when I, I, I hate everything started popping yeah, up. Like, yeah, like I hate everything, nostalgia critic, angry video game nerd, where it's just Grady like- Andre. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Grady yeah. Andre. It was just like being cynical was like, was just cool. You mm -hmm. know, that was that was a cool thing to do. And, and that was a dark period in two years of YouTube. Was it 2000? <laughs> 14 to 16, I want to say. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, and then people, people, I, th I think the audience, because I, I just felt like, I just got fucking bored of it, because I'm just like, what, what? What, what's what's cool about being angry? I don't want to be. I don't want to be angry. I want to be happy. <laughs> you know. Wow, what a controversial opinion. <laughs> I, know, <right? laughs> I just I just want to talk about things I like. I don't want to. I don't want like. It got to the point where you just watched. You just watch content, and you could tell they they were like playing up the anger for the camera. They mm. were they were like, let's let's just nitpick and just let's just find something that I'm just. Mm -hmm. I, I can just like be angry about and make jokes about mm -hmm. even if I don't genuinely feel it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, sort of online. But like, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But well, uh, I mean, it was true, and that's why I don't really make those kinds of videos anymore either. Because after after a while, I just realized like there's only so much you can do and say with that kind of content after a while where it just becomes like, oh, here's here's ex YouTuber getting angry once again about the hundredth thing that he hates, and it's yeah. like, all right, cool. Uh, anything else you can offer to the to the website? No, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna stop watching you. You know, like what are some of the best fan bases in the anime fandom that you think of? Because we've talked about well, the trick worst. question. <laughs> <laughs> trick question. <laughs> they all are. <laughs> no, 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 like I said, I, I like the BL one. BL, 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 Honestly, BL, fans, BL, is, BL fans seem so welcoming, and yeah, I wish some. more anime fandoms were like that. Yeah. Like, I, I think as well, like in a lot of senses, I think the the manga community, but like more so the the manga community that delves more into like the more niche titles. Yeah, I feel is a lot mm. more welcoming because like now that a lot of my content is a lot more in that community, I've realized that when you mention a manga that no one else has heard of, but this one person knows that they're like, what? Holy shit! They fucking mentioned my favorite manga. Yeah, I want more people to read mm. this kind. Of, it, mm -hmm. You know, much like the BL community, right? So it's yeah, like yeah. I feel it's again, it's like the the niche communities. Yeah, I feel it's definitely the most welcoming, the, yeah. the nicest. Although I will say, I think the BL fandom they just don't like uh, people who like Fujo bait. You know, people who mm. like try and like take advantage of the whole gay uh, thing, yeah. who don't actually give a shit about like supporting anything like LGBTQ. So right. Well, right. obviously, if you're just there. there, there are a lot of people, and I swear, like on TikTok as well, so many like people who try and take advantage of stuff. Oh like yeah, that. yeah. Uh, that's about it. But I mean, that's justified, I'd say. Um, yeah, no, I, 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 yeah, sorry, we're on the massive tangent then, because I just yeah, yeah. that up. Yeah. I think uh, we were talking about passion projects before. Yeah, we talk, were talking about passion <laughs> projects. Yeah, to me, like, yeah, go, going back to the fate fandom, it's, it's really weird because being like, being like, okay, I can't, I, it's so weird saying you're a fate fan, right? Because like, you say you're a fate fan and, and there's so many different levels of fate fans. It's like being a martial artist. It's yeah. like, yo, oh, are you a first damn black belt fate fan? Or are you, oh, oh I, this guy's a fifth damn black belt fate fan. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. Yeah, but the problem right? is you're, you're all, you're all losing. Right? You're, you're, you're fate fans, right? So like you don't win at all. So why it's like the biggest loser. Man. It's, it's, like, it's really weird seeing this dichotomy, right? Cause a lot of, a lot of fate fans have always been very toxic. And I, 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 I like I acknowledge that it is the vocal minority, but that vocal minority is very, very fucking vocal, right? But there's such a dichotomy between the normal fate fans and then just the fate go fans who are just like the most welcoming people in the world. And <laughs> like, it's it's like they-, they Dude, like, Cause they want, you to, they want you to spend money yeah. so they feel, so like, they feel less shame. Yeah, 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 about exactly. Like the done. fate go fans, they already know they're degenerates. They're yeah. just like, you know, we, we got nothing to prove, yeah. right? And then there's it's just like the, like the, I would say like it's it's less fate fans, it's like Fago fans, and then there's Type Moon fans, right? And it's it's mm. it's so weird like seeing their toxicity evolve over time because I remember back in the day when I was just starting to be an anime fan and just discovering fate as a whole, right? Mm. They were being they were being toxic for completely different reasons than they than they I guess they are now, right? Because before I I remember there was there was like go, I'm I'm talking about like old boomer stuff now, but I remember there was this, there was this review on ANN that was mm. reviewing Fate Zero, right? Mm. Yeah. And apparently this guy, this guy who did, who wrote this review got so much hate that he actually wrote like a blog post or an article saying like, oh, what, like apparently I am watching Fate wrong. Like pe people were giving him shit because he watched Fate Zero before reading the visual novels or before <laughs> like, or, or before- hey, Nobody got time for that, <laughs> fuck off. Yeah, and I guess like now 
I'm getting a lot of hate because to a lot of hardcore type moon fans, it, it makes it seem like I'm making it harder to get people into fate because I'm memeing it up and like I'm like talk, I'm memeing up about how many series and how right, daunting right. it looks yeah, for a newcomer. People being like, why, why is he making it seem complicated? I'm like, fuck, right because off. it is complicated. I'm like, and, I, and, and I'm just like, okay, like as like as a fate fan, I know that I don't think it's that complicated, but you just like have a, yeah. some self awareness yeah. to yeah. to like look at this chart or look at this graph and just see how is this going to look for the average person? Right. You know, that's that's like that's it's. It's, <laughs> you can try to fight the good fight as much as you want, but at the end of the day, it's a daunting franchise to get into. And yeah. that's just, that's just something it's, that- it's, it's all perspective, right? Yeah. Because again, like to the fan, to the fate fan base, it doesn't look complicated because they've literally spent years of their life my, yeah. studying my, it. My definition of a complicated show. Yeah. If you need to watch or research anything outside of the, the main, like the 25 episode run, yeah. I, it's considered, I consider it a complicated show. <laughs> If you have to then go and do an additional right, but that's, research. Yeah, that's the other thing. Literally yeah. anything that requires you to to go off the website and look at something else to understand the story is, is categorized in my head as a complicated story. But, but yeah. I because feel- That's not self-contained. The, I can't just watch the show and mm. be like, I understand yeah. fate. I have to look, that's that's complicated. Like, I, I feel that's the majority though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, you know, a lot of shows don't require you to do that. <laughs> Think about every show you do not, you know, to understand Seven Deadly Sins, you don't need to fucking go and, and read the wiki article <laughs> page to understand what's going on. You don't, you know, even Jojo, which has a, you know, part part six is a very odd ending, you know? Yeah. You can yeah. just start seven, you might be a little confused, but yeah. you kind of get what's happened. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, it, it's, and, and, and you can also confusing. enjoy the story without yeah. fully understanding it. Too, to me, right? if, if there's any additional reading information, it's complicated. Flat out, I don't give a shit what you think is, isn't as complicated. Yeah. If you have to read something else, it's complicated. Because yeah. yeah. they haven't been able to fit it into the goddamn run of the show. Yeah. And again, like the, the whole definition of like what a show is, you know, how complicated a show is, I feel is just completely dependent on the person. Right? Like, you know, I feel you're speaking for the majority. Yeah, I feel like that's, that you, you have to think of, right. yeah, when you're a fake fan, Clearly, you have something that's gone wrong where you can you can invest this much time into something. But a normal person yeah. will see that and think that's absurd. I'm not doing that. Yeah, time. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's this is like me as a fake fan commenting on what I see as the of the fake community, mm. but like, like. How do, as as like the most hardcore JoJo fans, how do you feel about the JoJo fandom? Well, see, actually, I was going to say like, yeah. say what you will about JoJo fans, obnoxious, a hundred percent. Yeah, but like. I, don't, I, I know many JoJo fans. I can't speak about all of them, but who are extremely hyped when anyone when anyone even gives a, sh a shot on yeah, Netflix yeah. or whatever. You know, they don't give a shit if you read the manga. It's like, dude, just get into JoJo. Yeah, like, we don't yeah. give a fuck for any means necessary. Yeah, it's like <laughs> I, I don't care if you have to play the games. I don't. I don't care if you yeah. have to consume it through memes. Just get into JoJo. I feel like yeah. that is like the num like JoJo fan. That's all they care about is mm. get into it. I don't yeah. care how you do it. Just just don't skip parts. Yeah. <laughs> if you're just watch. Just, just watch it in order, man. Just watch it in order. Just, just Ne ne Netflix fuck. has this brilliant thing where they play it in order. <laughs> yeah, just do that. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I think that's it. Like, I, I, I could be wrong. I do you? I, I mean, well, you guys. Okay, are okay, okay, okay. Well, well, there's, there's also this Get, thing play where the devil's out of I don't know. What? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not gonna say to skip parts. I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna fucking do something sacrilegious. But like, <laughs> I, but like, there's, there's, there's a part of me that is just like sometimes I just think a series shouldn't get mainstream. A series shouldn't get popular, you know? Yeah. Like there, there are some people who are just like, for, for example, Jojo, right? It's, it's popular as hell now, right? But like, part of me is just like, I don't think Jojo should be a mainstream series because it's just way too weird, yeah. you know? Like I'd like, could, like sure, if you skip parts, it might be easier to get into, but I just feel like it's just not a series that lends itself to being like the fucking Marvel franchise, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. it's just it's just too out there, you yeah. know? Because I, I feel like being part of a JoJo fan and like meeting a fellow JoJo fan, there's like there's like it's like a connection there, you know? You know, you, yeah. you, you, it's guys, like you also like that weird thing I like. Yeah, 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 yeah right. Yeah. And then like especially going and and especially especially. <laughs> 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 and then you see an unsucked dick. <laughs> That's a, one of my favorite images, and I don't know why it makes me laugh. Is the it's like the gif of the Hulk running in, in the desert, and it's JoJo fans when they see an unsucked cock. I don't, I don't know why. I you know, and I love it. It's so fun. It's it? so funny because <laughs> JoJo fans has just become full circle when JoJo fans just want to clown on themselves yeah, for yeah. being JoJo fans because it 
it's so good. I, don't know, I love it. <laughs> uh, there are just some captions that if we're going on another different tangent. There are just some captions that just stick out to my mind for like some gif or something. That's yeah. that's one of them. The other one is just like well, that's why I love this mainstream. It's just it's so fucking weird. Yeah. It's just like that's why it is mainstream. It's so fucking stupid. <laughs> like, I love it. I, I, I think JoJo just like I don't know why how it was just so ahead of its time because yeah. like it was made way too early for meme right? culture. For, for meme culture, yeah, but yeah. like it, it's sort of like predicted meme culture, not even predicted. It was just made for meme culture. Oh, yeah. And I, I like now it's getting popular because of the memes, right? And I feel like you, you meet a JoJo fan and you're like, I know you went through, I know you got through part one. You were, you're a real one, man. <laughs> you stuck through, you, you had faith, man. You had you faith. You watched all 50 ep 48 episodes of part three. You believed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you believed. yeah. I was bored in the middle too, man. I was bored too, but well, we I got through it. We got yeah, through it together. Through it. We got yeah, through it together. I, I think, I, I think, Something that's not often talked about Jojo is the fucking, there's, there, hard, there is man. some boring it's, parts yeah. to it. You know, there is a lot of boring parts to Jojo. Show. I, I've met a lot of people who have uh, fell at part one and part three. Mm, like it is, mm. it is a hard show mm. to watch. Yeah, um, at part at times, part three especially. You're I rewarded. Like. I, I actually <laughs> thought I actually thought I actually thought part one was easier to get through than some of part three. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, I love part mm. three to death because mm, yeah. it's br bring, brought us some of the most iconic parts. But you know. As a JoJo fan, I recognize that part three is, especially the anime, is long. And, yeah. and it is not good at times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, straight up, it's. I don't mm -hmm. think some some fights are entertaining. Mm -hmm. As much as I love the orangutan and, and stuff like that, that, that <laughs> yeah. fight was kind of boring. Like, yeah, and it ended really. Yeah, it's it's just weird. weird. I, I think part three needed uh, was like twice as long as it needed to be, oh. mm -hmm. and like the ideas were less interesting than what you saw in like other parts. I would say. I'm sure people disagree. I don't care. That's yeah. just personally <laughs> how I felt. Like, that's, that's because like with JoJo fans, are like JoJo. Uh, you, you you only hear about positive things about JoJo because yeah. JoJo fans just want more people to get into the JoJo the right way. But uh, <laughs> okay, okay, totally off topic now. Uh, kind of on topic. How do you guys feel about gatekeeping then? Because gatekeeping like shows? Yeah, or just gatekeeping in fandoms general? in general. I don't know if this right? is because I've become wiser with age. Yeah. Uh, now I don't give a shit. Yeah, uh, I don't yeah. Really yeah. give a shit I think anymore. when I was like 18, 17, I, I probably cared a bit more. I, probably, I yeah. definitely cared, you know, back when I was making those like negative but shows, you know, right? But now I'm just like, if you want to get into it, dude, just like, just get into it. And, and it's like, cause at the end of the day, you can gatekeep all you want, but like, you know, if people do come in and find it, <laughs> And they don't end up liking it. Yeah. Then yeah. it's then it's whatever. Like it's not that's not going to make a difference for you. I mean, it's easier for me to say now. You know, my wallet is dependent on people getting into anime. <laughs> you know, people get into anime. I'm like, come on in, come watch some videos about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, right. I'm like, come up. You want to find more about uh, some some black butler? Dude, come, yeah, I got, come, I got the right stuff. Come right, right in, bro. Uh, you know, I, when you you know when you when you uh, you get some. Uh, <laughs> You want some medication? You want some additional <laughs> shots? You come to me. You know. Uh, yeah. You know. Now, now it's great because you know all, odds are that if you watch anime, you might get into us. So I feel like it's way mm. easier for us to be like, yeah, dude. We, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, mm. come, come watch. Well, I mean, I, I, but I, th I feel again, it's as you said, it's because we have you know matured a lot. Yeah, but also, yeah, yeah like I just realized, like, oh, it's kind of pointless at the end of the but day. But looking back when I was 16, 17, mm, 15, mm. you know, I think yeah. at the time I was probably defensive of it because I was. I, I, I was probably, this is probably all I had, yeah. you know, that made me happy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. uh, when, when, you're, when you're 15, 16, you don't really have much to get happy about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, to me, it was probably a thing of, I don't want someone, these normies getting into it because yeah. there's something that I care so much about and that I, I'm so I'm the only one that understands this. Because, well, yeah, yeah. you, you yeah. mean about it, but I also, you know, I feel for people who, who tie a lot of their self worth to these shows. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I try and, you know, when I do talk about these shows, as much as I want, uh, to to not discredit them for caring about it, I, mm. I, I want to kind of do them justice, but also help help understand that people becoming into their show is not affecting them enjoying the show. No, yeah, because because I, I think the thing about gatekeeping <coughs> gatekeeping is that I understand the mentality of why people want to gatekeep and why people do it. You know, I understand it, and in even some ways, I do even empathize with it. I yeah, just me too, like me too. I I think I've just like grown past it because. Um, because like, I, I remember like back in the day when you were an anime fan, you met another anime fan and there was just like, no, there, was, yeah, it was nuts. Th there was like just this fucking connection you there, man. Right away. Yeah, you <laughs> wait, suck, talk suck. about sucking dick. Like we, 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 we just skip straight to Zach fucking pants right like, now. anal sex, man. Like no, fucking, I, I, like, well, no especially. lube. <laughs> no, just no, just fucking no. no it's, it's like the bite fucking- Bite down on the pillow. It, you, you know that like fucking Sonic and Mario gif? That just, that spread around. That's just, yeah, yeah. That, that, like Rippy anime fans, clothes anime fans when they met each other in the early 2000s. That's what it 
was like, man. You know, especially in like uh, the UK where you don't really have many avenues to meet anime fans. Yeah. It was, it was n- insane. Like it was like yeah. you immediately became friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then like there, there was like so much that you had in common with each other because you, you just had never met another person that was yeah. just, that just watched anime or even knew of it. So yeah. it, it was, there was just like this, it's gonna sound so cheesy, but it was just like, it was just like a special bonds that yeah, you man. had with, yeah. you, that you had that like, just everyone outside just didn't have. And then like slowly as anime got more and more and more popular, it just started feeling less special, I guess. And mm. you know, that sounds really pretentious, but you know, it, it it was special to you because it felt it felt like something that only you had or only, only a small group of people that you could connect with had. And then as that medium grew, you found more and more people that maybe you didn't vibe with as much or you didn't mm. connect with as much. And you're just like, well, this just, isn't as special anymore. And I feel like most recently, the community that's felt this the most probably is the fucking VTubing community. Cause my, my oh, God, yeah, yeah. the amount of gatekeeping I've seen in the VTubing, VTubing community is like fucking insane when it started to blow up last year. Like, oh, you're a VTuber well, fan? Name every VTuber. <laughs> yeah, right? I remember when, you know, I feel like there's been like waves. Like, so I feel like first gen anime fans, people mm. who had to somehow bootleg it from Japan on a VHS tape. Mm -hmm. And then second gen is probably your gen where you were able to get some online, but it was mainly through DVDs and sharing and stuff like that. But you were able to download some. Mm -hmm. Then I feel like I was like next gen, like this is where like my first experience was like Espanol sub part one. (laughs) That was like, that was like the worst option for me. Yeah, yeah. And I I, I feel like, yeah, we're definitely seeing that with VTubers now. And it does make it more like less special, but I feel that, oh, I forgot what I was gonna fucking say, man. I, I had a point that I totally forgot. Oh my God, I'm fucking stupid. I mean, I was, I was gonna say that what the anime community went through is basically what the gaming community went through 30 years ago, right? Like, you know, you start, like, yeah. you go back in the 80s, there were kids who were like, oh, you play fucking video games, you fucking weirdo. But then yeah. when you find that one person who's like, you like Sonic too? I like <laughs> Sonic as well. Oh my god! And that's what you know. And then they kiss, right? It's like, <laughs> and, they're like, and like, and then, and then, as gaming got popular, they saw Mario, and they were just yeah, like, and then they were like, oh my god, <laughs> oh my god. Oh. <laughs> but you know, and, and then you know, like in the '90s and like early 2000s, when gaming got more and more popular, and then you know, the the school bully would also be like, yeah, I play video games as well. Did you know that? And oh. uh, and then you know, you would just yeah, and then at that point, it would be like, oh maybe this isn't like a special thing anymore because now everybody is doing it. But then yeah. at the same time, that's like a good thing because now we've got so many more games and so many more amazing games that are just like openly talked about with everybody. So like yeah. at the end of the day, you know, all those people who are gatekeeping like video games and stuff like that didn't really get anything out of it. If anything, yeah. they were stopping the advancement of something. I mean, I, I, I like the thing with the thing that, you know, I understand having things feel sp- less special, but Mm. at the end of the day, you got to realize that to like kind of claim this kind of piece of media or kind of fandom thing as yours, it's just selfish at the end of the they day. They didn't make right? it for you. They don't give a shit about you. Yeah, they yeah. make the show because they want to make money. They don't give a fuck <laughs> yeah, about exactly, you. Yeah, exactly, right? Why, why are you ca- having some connection to this? I get it, you love the thing and you know, and yeah. yeah, there is some artistry behind it and whatnot. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's like, you're not fucking special and the yeah. show doesn't belong to you. Yeah. Right? yeah. And so I feel like it's almost ignorant to believe that you have some ownership over it because you you care, you know? Like, yeah. you know, even as YouTubers, you know, you, you do see people who are like, I was here first. And yeah. as a YouTuber, I'm thinking, I, I don't care who was first. I mean, it's great. It's I, like, cool. I, I appreciate it. And I appreciate the people who've been watching me, but at the end of the day, it's like, I don't think you're any more important mm. than someone who just came in, you know? Yeah. The only difference is, is that you were just at the on the YouTube algorithm at the right time, the like the right place, you know? No one yeah. searched for, no one typed in C Dog VA. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, so it, it's, you know, I, to claim some ownership over that. It's like you, f- they found you in the same way that the person who subscribed to you yesterday found you. Yeah, you know, likely, and right? uh, like, I don't, and I'm sure the people who made X anime or made X movie feel the same way where mm. it's like, I don't, I don't care how you found us as long as you watch. I like you're just talking about a site then. So my mind, well, you're, like, you're like X anime. I was like, no, X, X anime. No. Sorry. I was like, <laughs> X, like X uh, videos. Any, any like, uh, no, no. what, what, X what, 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 I can't uh, hear the word X and the word and not just think. <laughs> the whole, the trash taste set is falling apart as <laughs> we speak. Do we, do, we, do we want to take a break? Yeah, let's take yeah, a break. Let's, let's take a break while we, while we 
fix the set. This episode is sponsored by Mac Weldon. You're a busy guy, so stop thinking about what to wear and just embrace the radically efficient Mac Weldon Daily Wear System. <gasps> the Daily Wear System is a selection of clothes rooted in smart design, made with performance fabrics, and built to work together. Oh my From God. breathable t-shirts and polos to stylish button-ups and shorts, underwear, and beyond, Mac Weldon makes it easy for you to dress for work, leisure, and play, or wherever the summer takes you. God, you're just basically speed running life at this point. I know. God, talk about optimization. I am currently wearing my Mac Weldon underwear. <gasps> Look at that. Is it comfy? You bet your ass it is. How's it, how's it in the summer? Oh, you bet it's, it's breathable. It's firm. It's the right amount of underwearness. I don't know how to describe <laughs> underwear. It's amazing. The underwear is perfect for any day. And I love that I don't have to think about it. Any summer, any winter, you name it. I can wear this underwear, no problem. For the ultimate lazy Sunday, their Ace Sweat Shorts have modern tailoring and pair perfectly with their ultra soft, ultra upgraded Pima tees. Ooh, Ooh sounds sexy. It and for weekend travel, both near and far, their silver knit polo and radius shorts are perfect, high tech, highly packed. Packable combo. Ooh. Highly packable combo. So, you bet it is. So what are you waiting for? Buy some time this summer with the Mac Weldon Daily Wear System. For 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon.com slash trash taste and enter promo code trash taste. That's MacWeldon.com slash trash taste, promo code trash taste for 20% off. Mac Weldon, radically efficient wardrobing. Back to the episode. I mean, at the end of the day, Garth, it's hard to sit here and be like, gatekeeping? Good. You know, I mean, <laughs> Do it. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's, it's, I, I feel like it's such a dated argument and, and us being like, hey guys, gatekeeping? Bad. It's like shit. Gatekeeping has ended. Wow. Gatekeeping has <laughs> ended. Yeah, wow. Yo, gatekeeping being real silent since they dropped that episode of Trash Taste, man. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Where's the response? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's like what I said to say. Like, yeah, I guess it's, it's a good discussion to have and, and, and delve into it. But at the end of the day, it's quite hard to just be like, yeah, gatekeeping? Good. Yeah, like, when has gatekeeping ever worked out? So it's never, <laughs> literally never. Yeah, if, if things if things get popular, things just get popular. I'm sorry, that's yeah. just that's just the end all be all, and it's gonna get. If it gets popular, then unfortunately we have no control over it. So might yeah, as well just live with it, right? I don't think a single fan has any control over how popular a show is going to get, especially <laughs> no. when they didn't make it. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's like the only thing that can kill a creation is the creator. You know. At the end yeah, of the day, even then, and you even know, then, even it's then, like, you know, is there like conspiracy theorists, gatekeepers? What do you mean? Like people who are like. <laughs> believe in like conspir conspiracy theories. Do they like gatekeep? Like, like how, oh, you, oh, oh yeah? You think the moon landing was fake? Yeah. Oh, yeah, how fake? Tell me, tell me about it, you know? Oh, you're just a fake one. You just saw it on the news, bro. You oh, know? you're a conspiracy theorist? Yeah. Do they like- Name they every like, reptilian. Do they like, do they like gatekeep the intensity oh of the God, theory? Like, I remember when the anime fandom went through a phase where like, it was like a genuine discussion about how to spot a fake anime fan. <laughs> Like, do you remember this, Joe? You, you must remember this, Joe. Yeah, uh, he, he remembers I, this. I made a video about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like, I think it was like the third or fourth video I ever made was called like, how to spot a fake or talk. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my god! What a throwback! <laughs> wow, I'm just I'm just calling it, calling you, you out today, man. Joey's been real sweaty this episode. Yeah. <laughs> You've really like dated my content. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! And I remember thinking, like, damn, I just made some biting commentary. So wait, 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 wait. How, how, how did you stop a spot of fake yeah, anime I, fan? I, I'm <sighs> genuinely okay, curious. Right, right. I can't. Jeez, it was like eight years ago. I made this but video. I feel like Joey was that stereotypical. Yeah, gatekeeping, absolutely. Gatekeeping anime. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I'm Joey not, was I'm that not even going to pretend you know? that I wasn't that guy because yeah. I was absolutely that guy. But then again, I think a lot of anitubers were back then. And yeah. I feel it was, again, it was those kinds of anitubers who I, I feel like you, you've, you've, uh, you've read the room pretty well as mm. time's gone on. Like, I feel like you've understood what to change. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I became an adult. <laughs> At the end of the day, I yeah. realized, oh, all this shit about like gatekeeping and, you know, hating on a show that's popular, just, you know, for, to pose a controversial yeah, opinion. That shit's childish. It's a lot of energy, man, to get angry about this stuff. So yeah, I just, it is. you know, I, I, I'm sure I would gatekeep if I had the energy for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I just, and you know me, in real life, I'm like the least angry person. <laughs> Like, yeah, I don't get angry about shit. I feel like I get often. angry about dumb shit in life. I don't really yeah. get angry about stuff like, I get angry about like, oh, my, my taxi is two minutes late. I get like fake angry over it. I just want to get angry about stuff, but I'm not actually angry about stuff. I just want to make a, I just want to like mm. uh, get angry about something to gone. I'd be like, this pissed me off. And yeah. I'm not actually pissed off. 
But yeah, I you're just, just like, saying. I just want to say I'm. Yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. know why I like doing that. I, I think it's just part of being British. Yeah, I think, I think you're just so, British. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and like, everyone will know that I'm not actually angry. But it just see, I just don't know why I like getting worked up in like yeah. a funny. I way. know when you're actually angry because you don't tell me you're angry. <laughs> 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 I think I actually get angry. And I'm like silent. Yeah, there's the silent. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, he's actually angry. <laughs> but like, I never get angry about stuff I, I like or anything like that because I'm just like, mm. oh, all right, okay, uh, yeah. I mean, okay, cool. Yeah, it's 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 to me to me it's like if I get angry over someone's opinion or something like that, which is why. Like, which is why I fucking love trash taste. Where I'm just like, you, you have a shit opinion about food or music mm. or gaming or whatever. I'm. We can just be fake angry, and that's why I love discussing it because I, I love discussing it with anyone, right? Because yeah. you can like, when when I call someone, when I say someone that's trash, trash taste, 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 trash taste, you, you can say it with the knowledge that you don't actually mean it, you know? Yeah. And and if someone actually takes that seriously, then I can be like, good. I, th I think I get angry, but the emotion isn't there. Yeah, like yeah, I yeah. actually, I, some of some opinions you've said, I'm like, yeah. what the fuck? Like, I'm actually pissed off, <laughs> but like, I'm not actually like upset. Like, yeah, yeah, but you're not gonna you, be like you, after the camera turns off, you're no, not gonna be I like, give a shit, you, you get a visceral reaction where yeah, I'm just like, like I, um, I need to say something right <laughs> now, right? Like the fact that you just don't like the bidet thing actually made me like kind of angry yeah. at the time. So I'm just like, yeah. imagine like, you know, getting to- It's the angriest I've been all year. I just, I just can't, like you've had this amazing opportunity to have your ass sprayed and it just pissed me off that you didn't want it anyway. That's a totally different argument. Um. Yeah, I mean, uh, these are flashing. Oh yes, yeah, we stop. What the fuck is going on here? I'm angry. <laughs> Being fake angry. It is what it is. Just be angry. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. God, I can't remember what point we. It is what there. it is. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> our, our cameras cut out. Uh, they ran the the SD cards were full. So we, uh, yeah, we, we completely lost the point that we on. Basically, uh, when I'm angry, I'm not angry. Yeah. When I'm angry. When I'm silent, I'm actually angry. Yeah. <laughs> but like going back to, uh, cause I like going back to like having haters that won't give your content another chance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you ever like watched someone's content said it wasn't for you. And then for some reason you came back years later and you're just like, damn, okay. This content's actually pretty good. Oh uh, yeah. I've, I've had a few options, like a few times where I've been like that. But I think it's also because like, you know, as you grow older, the yeah. type of content you watch is just going to be different, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know, I've had the opposite effect as well, where it's like, you know, I think it's very common to be like, oh, I used to watch this YouTuber, I grew up, and then oh, it's not so much for me anymore. So you kind yeah. of grow out of it. But I think like growing into a channel as yeah. well is I, very much. I, I think I think that's more interesting because like you grow out you grow out of a lot of channels. Mm. You know, mm. a lot of a lot of content becomes dated. You know, especially if the creator doesn't evolve. But what yeah. I find more interesting is that if you find a creator that you just think is not for you, and then you come back years later oh, and then you're just like, damn, you, you're, a, you're actually a cool guy and you make cool content. Oh, like, you know, if like 10 years ago, right? When I was in my teens, yeah. like you would never catch me watching like a Tom Scott video or a, or a Mark Rober video, right? <laughs> but like now I fucking love those channels because yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. super interesting. And I feel now that I have so much more of just, you know, a base knowledge yeah. to be able to appreciate content like that. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, you know, again, 10 years ago, mm. I'd be like, give me the poo poo pee pee jokes. Where yeah, are those? Yeah. And the, the, those don't exist on this channel, boring. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there is any YouTube. I, I feel like the biggest example for me was probably Felix. Where mm -hmm. like, especially when he like debuted as like the Let's Player and the face of YouTube, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just like, I'm just like, who is this guy? Who, <laughs> who is this guy like making like, you know, I, I think it was like- Screaming every screaming video. Screaming every yeah. video, like fucking doing, fucking doing ear rapes like every every five seconds yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was like, this is just not my kind of content. Yeah. And then like, it, it's so, it was so interesting seeing his content evolve over time mm. and just being like, okay, he's not, he's not even close to the face of YouTube anymore. Mm. Uh, at least officially, yeah. <laughs> and um, and now, he, like to me, he like makes content that was just like, I I I just started watching him like years back, like after he had stopped the let's play phase because mm. I I can't remember how long it took for him to to like change his content from being like the let's player guy to just being like the. I'm just I'm just a meme guy and I'm just gonna do what I want yeah. because that that content appealed to me way more and it was just really interesting to be like oh he's a way cooler guy than I ever thought he was when I was a kid and I thought mm. and I thought this was the kind of content that he made yeah definitely I feel like during his let's play era like you know he was showing 
a, a, a lot of himself, you know, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, like I think the best way for Let's Plays to grow is to have that personality that you can, you know, yeah, kind of attach to. But at the same time, like now that I know him personally, I'm yeah. like, that wasn't you. Like that, that, <laughs> that was not Felix. That yeah, was yeah. I feel yeah. like you become a successful YouTuber when you stop trying to be a YouTuber. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, like, yeah. I think the the real goal to being a good YouTuber is to stop trying to be one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. when you just embrace. Just yourself who you and are, what yeah. you like, you know? Yeah. Uh, like he, he makes videos on like philosophy from time to time. Mm. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. You know, even though I might not particularly have an interest in that, I think there is something uh, that is very interesting about someone who just wants to talk about something they like. Yeah. Uh, and once you have that base understanding of how to make a video entertaining, mm. you can then apply that to things that people, your audience probably didn't know anything about. Yeah. And mm kind of get them interested in it, or at least have them entertained for four or five minutes. You yeah. know what I mean? My, my favorite video from him to this day is still the one that, it came completely out of left field that he made a couple of years ago. He just made this five minute video of him just about. spilling his love over Blam. Blam. That was, that's, oh my God, that's my favorite Felix yeah, video as well. Because it was so <laughs> just like, it was nothing like he'd ever made before. Like, yeah, he, yeah. I mean, he made, you know, anime content every now and then. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for him to like, he wasn't even on camera. It was just his voice no, yeah. this, and yeah. just pictures of panels and him just it's spilling his love over this very, very niche yet amazing manga series. And I'm, I'm like, damn dude, like that's the most human I've ever heard yeah. you be. Honestly, like a uh, li little secret here, but that video actually inspired me to do more personal videos as well. It was, right. it was that single video mm. that just came out left field. I was like, yo, what 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 PewDiePie is this? Yeah, I like <laughs> like 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 it, the it, e rapes. Yeah, 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 I know, right? I know, right? Because I, I think it was it was that video not only like got me back into his content, but also inspired me and inspired me to change my own content to just be like, maybe I don't need to be always be the haha -ha funny guy. Maybe mm. I can make serious content as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Haha -ha funny guy. <laughs> ha -ha. I don't like I, I think the biggest curveball I've like had recently was recently I, I like got recommended a video of Logan Paul's editor, right? Right. Who went through his, uh, who basically broke down how he edited some of Logan Paul's newest videos. So it was like, it was like a new, I, I believe it's a new editor that has just been around for the more recent content. And, mm. he, and he broke down what he did during the editing phase and like how he broke down the story and narrative and how he made certain jokes work. And I was just like, yo, this is, he, this guy knows what he's doing. Holy shit, he's a really good editor. And then I watched some of his more recent content and obviously like separating the man from the content he makes. Mm. It was just really good content. I was like, mm. I was like fucking blown away that I was enjoying a Logan Paul video. And yeah. I just genuinely thought it was like good content. Like, I don't know, he doesn't upload that often anymore because mm. why would he when he's making fucking millions of dollars boxing, whoever the fuck he's gonna box. Yeah. But God, like, I wanna box someone so bad. <laughs> <laughs> just, just for the money. No, I don't even give a shit about the sport. I just, <laughs> so much money they're making, fuck yeah. me. No, but I, I agree though, like, you know, again, like it, there, there was always, for the longest time, there was always that stigma of, you know, like, oh, Logan Paul video equals bad, yeah. right? Mm. But again, like I feel Logan Paul is one of those people who, you know, to his credit has kind of done a 180 on his content and has mm -hmm. really like showed that like, oh, someone can actually kind of mature and like yeah. make a better person of themselves. And, you know, like you might not be exactly a fan of him, but yeah. you have to respect the fact that he has changed his content yeah. in a lot of cases and for a lot of people for the better. Yeah. You know? And this is just me like purely as a content creator appreciating when someone makes good content, you can tell when someone's making good right. content. And I can at least appreciate that, yeah. you know? What you do I off agree. the camera, something completely fucking different, yeah. you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, like going back to the boxing thing, <laughs> is there anyone you want to box? Sorry, you, 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 Any, just, anyone, you just mentioned that and I was just like, I, I, I need to know. Now, yeah, and now any, I need to any, know. Anyone who, uh, I should make a tier list of YouTubers I think I could. <laughs> YouTubers I, I can beat in the fight tier YouTubers list. I think I Trash <laughs> taste boxing special. That's number one on the list, Gaunt. Gaunt. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it, let's do it. <laughs> like, Only Gaunt. <laughs> yeah. Someone who uh, can uh, help me get a lot of money from it. Uh, that would be good. That's, I, dude. Why would anyone else do it? What the fuck? Yeah. No. Yeah, they're all doing it for the money. I, 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 I'll do it for the money. The money seemed crazy. The money's yeah, like the is money nuts. is actually insane. But like, okay, like one one thing one thing that I'm always like struggling with as a creator, right? Is is the kind of like the the upload schedule that you gave yourself, right? Because like to me, I've you know, sick, unfortunately, success Lamau was upload schedule. <laughs> yeah, Lamau. 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 I mean, like for me, it's like way less than you guys, right? Mm -hmm. 
But like, to, like you, you see a lot of YouTubers go through this phase, right? Where they have they have like this very strict upload schedule and then they get successful doing something else mm. on their YouTube. And then their upload, you, you kind of notice that their upload schedule for their main channel or their original oh, so channel. You, they, you get successful doing something outside of their own channel. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Like, are you ever like, how much personal attachment do you have you to your own channel that you, would you ever be scared if it like, if it dies, even though you're doing well outside of it? I mean, we have trash taste now, which is- uh, Yeah, I mean, obviously I don't like failing in anything. I'm, I'm, I'm a competitive <laughs> guy. I want to win in every aspect I, of my life. I don't, yeah. don't want to fail in something, you know? <laughs> okay, if, you, if your YouTube channel dies, yeah. are, you, are you a successful YouTuber? Well, I mean, it, <laughs> wait, okay, okay. <laughs> if your YouTube channel dies, but yeah. it was once successful, uh, were you are you a successful YouTube? Ch- well, it depends. Well, not like, like there, there's plenty of people who. Would you YouTube- say you're a failed YouTuber? There's 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 plenty of people who are still succeeding on like other platforms. It depends how your channel died. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like if if you if if you killed it with your own volition and like because of something you did. Yeah. Then, like you know, maybe. Oh yeah, yeah but I, I don't I don't buy the whole thing. Oh, the, get- the algorithm fucked me over. Fuck off. No, 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 not like no, that. No, if no. it's like if it's like you know if someone just said like if you're a really successful YouTuber and one day you're just like, you know what? Kind of want to do something else. And then yeah. you're just like, peace out. Then I think you can say you're a successful YouTuber. If yeah. you got canceled for some shit, maybe not. What if you had like a <laughs> slow decline, your videos weren't really improving, you kind of stagnated, you know, your yeah. channel kind of fizzled out. Mm. Are you, I don't, I don't, are you I don't, I don't think in, in that case that you're a failed YouTuber. I no. mean, everyone, not ev- everyone will peak eventually. You know, that's just that's just a part of life and that's just True. a part of the platform. It's just a matter of like when you think it's the right time to end it. You know? Like yeah. cuz some people or, or, or some people don't even end it but they are, you know, they're still living pretty comfortably and they're right. still getting decent enough views yeah. on what they do. It's yeah. just not nearly the same level as what they were doing in what's, their peak. What's your definition of a successful YouTuber? What's success to you, Connor? Yeah. <laughs> Money, <Pyramid>. fame, <laughs> pyramid. pyramid scheme. Man, I, I don't know, just- uh, <laughs> Like, cause, cause there's so many YouTubers now that I'm just like, whatever happened to them? Like, I mean, hmm. it's, you know, it's one of those things where let's, it's very hard to tell someone to do the exact same thing they're doing mm-hmm. for half the money. Yeah, mm. you know, it's it's just mentally, it's it's a hard thing to do. Yeah, regardless of how good the money still is, or how you know, it's very difficult to just tell someone, hey, just accept you're doing half as good as you were last month. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because that's something that takes a toll on you. Because mm. it, it you does. know you you know you're capable of getting what you had. Yeah, and yet, how do you? You know, because especially if it's like more than just one person, if there's a team of you, it's impossible to get the team everyone on the team to be like, yeah, dude, let's just keep doing what we're doing for half the money, <laughs> you know? It's just, half, it's, 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 it's just the reality of it. Yeah. Like, do the same thing for half the paycheck. You know, cause yeah. stuff like, uh, God, I don't know, like uh, Yogg's cast or whatever, when they were making like, I don't know, fucking a billion dollars or something from Minecraft. Yeah, you know? or how, Game Grumps. Yeah, how do, you, how do you convince the gang to stay together when the money isn't going as well. Is this, mm. this sounds like a fucking prelude for trash. <laughs> like, like, what, if, what if we start getting less views? We get, we get 800K views an episode. See you guys. We're, trash we're, yeah, we're, done. we're done, we're done. <laughs> that, I, What's I, that Twitter page where it's just like things that have aged horribly. Yeah. Yeah, just, just, just see this clip getting posted in like three years or something, man. Well, no, I mean, you know, I, I feel like in terms of that, you know, uh, I feel like it depends on what you are doing. Like mm, if, you, yeah. if you have an insane schedule, mm. it's the, the likelihood is gonna, be there where you're gonna be more likely to quit if the mm. money isn't as good, if the schedule is intense. Mm. You know, trash taste, we just turn out once a week and fucking talk. That's like, I can't yeah. see uh, any time soon where this becomes a burden to my life. I'm <laughs> no, like, no. Oh fuck, I gotta talk once a week. Oh my Jesus God, I gotta Christ. talk to my best mates. What oh my the fuck, God, man. I gotta, you know, I mean- Is oh it worth God. my throat power? I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to say that just in case people get fucking worried. So there's <laughs> people like, oh, you're like, what? They're mentioning groups declining uh, and, you know, I-, I well, again, like, okay, so then taking that same, you know, like hypothetical that you were saying, okay. like, let, let's put that in the case with trash. Trash days, taste, right? Right. So, like, would we you go, say we get a half the views? Would you say that in like, you know, I wouldn't give however a many years time, if we were getting half or a quarter of the views, right? Yeah, I, I just want to talk. I don't give a shit. I don't give. A, we. I, I wasn't expecting a million views anyway. No, you know, I, sure. I don't. I don't care if it, you know. I was. I was, I was prepared for like a hundred. We, 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 we were prepared for a hundred k after you a know, year. Yeah. We've said this many times. We were yeah. gonna. At the end of the day, this is, uh, and it always has been a passion project. And I just want to talk. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a big mouth. I, I wanna. I wanna, <laughs> I wanna just talk with my friends. You know, and I want to have an outlet to do that. Yeah. Um, whether that's narcissistic, you can judge for yourself. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't know if I need to see a psychiatrist about it. I don't know. Mm. But um, 
Yeah, uh, it's just that was what it was for me. It was never a it was never a business venture. It was always yeah. We, we never planned for this to be like as successful as our main. Obviously, it's not more successful. Obviously, if we can make good money, we'll make good money yeah. and we'll do what we can. But obviously, if it stops making money, I'm not going to care. Mm, yeah. um, but because I, I have I have other things that I'm doing, and it, yeah. it's, I never try and put all my eggs in one basket. But you know, in cases where there were channels where people's whole career was riding on it, mm. it's hard to. I find it is hard to convince people to stay on board when the money is like one third one, yeah. one half you know it's it's but, it's hard but mm. i think in that case it does like you do have to kind of follow your passion right follow, because you're, you're not going to be happy grinding out the same co same content that you've been making but that really shows if you are passionate as well if, yeah, it, yeah, if yeah. it does if it does plummet mm. yeah for exactly. some reason mm. but also again there has to be a question that has to be a, a question has to be answered there is like okay if the views did half mm -hmm. something has gone wrong yeah. Whether you like to admit it or not, something yeah. has gone wrong. And it's know? not always the algorithm. Sometimes, okay, on a freak accident, you know, yeah. with the whole, uh, okay, 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 I'm about to Yogscast. It doesn't even fucking know. Yogscast is the channel. What that, happened to Yogscast? So Yogscast is the channel that made uh, uh, Minecraft videos and they didn't really, you know, you could blame like the big, algorithm. Big group, big, you could blame big, the algorithm. Yeah. And yeah, there was a time when the algorithm was changing. Mm. But if, if one thing has been proven, Minecraft has been everlasting on YouTube. Yeah. And clearly what's <clears> needed to be done was to change the content. Yeah. yeah. Right? And they didn't change the content. Mm. So, you know, time and time again, YouTube has proven that it is more often than not, not YouTube's fault. Yeah. Mm. Yes, if you're an animator, you've been fucked over. Yeah. But also, animation channels are still doing well. Yeah. So you have to change what you're doing. Like I mean, there's you, there's animation channels that have done well because they've it, it uh, adapted their kind of workflow. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. you know everyone wants to demonize YouTube and they they change the algorithm and and it is what it is. You know, at the end of the day, you, you as YouTubers, you're on borrowed time. Yeah, mm. it's always changing. You yeah. sh you should have known better when you mm. were getting into this. It was always changing. Yeah. yeah, you 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 are you are building a foundation on quicksand. You yeah. you should have been changing that foundation as you're building this tower yeah, yeah. constantly. Yeah. And and so when I I get angry when I see these YouTubers who complain about the YouTube video being demonetized on Twitter, they they throw a fuss that it's not being it's not getting the same views. And I want to reply to them, but we're mutuals and we're supposed to be civil. And I want to I want to just slap them and be like, listen, you know what's going on. Don't 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 try and get your your fans to shout at YouTube. They get mm. enough shit, yeah. you know? And there are YouTubers, uh, I, I won't name them, but there's a lot of them who still do it, who constantly complain at YouTube. And it pisses me off because mm. I'm like, this is not YouTube's fault. This is your fault. Mm. Yeah. It, and the fact that you can't see that, or maybe you do see it and you don't care, mm. is really annoying. Yeah. Yogscast is the channel that made, I should go into that, <laughs> talk about Yogscast. <laughs> Yogscast made uh, Minecraft videos yeah. mm -hmm. and their channel started dying because they didn't really change it up and it's just over like two or three years. Mm. So they had plenty of time to change it up. Mm -hmm. um, and it, more often than not, there is there is an obvious factor at play that went wrong. Mm. Yeah. Whatever well, that what, might be, we did, don't know. Did, uh, was that the end of the point? Yeah. Well, with <laughs> I thought you were going to state the obvious point. I always said with Yogscast, you know, like they just didn't change their content. Just, okay. Because yeah, yeah. the way you ended that was just like, and then there was an obvious reason you know, why like, it declined. You know, uh, <laughs> you ended that. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> Like you ended that sentence in a it's comma. It's so obvious. It's so obvious. It's oh so obvious that I don't need to state it. Yeah. Like name, name a channel. Name a channel. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the reason. I'm so knowledgeable about YouTube. I Ryan talk. Heger. Ryan Heger? Yeah. He just doesn't upload anymore. What do you mean? That's he just true. stopped uploading. Yeah, every true. every video that Ryan did outside of the podcast did well. Yeah, yeah. that's like, true. Like when he did a, you know, when he actually tried, it did well. Mm. Like he just wanted to become a Twitch streamer. Yeah. Congratulations, Ryan. You succeeded in doing what you wanted to no, do. No, exactly. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I still think he's a successful YouTuber. Yeah. He's like not pulling the numbers of his peak, but like to me that that doesn't matter because yeah. it's you're like, you're, everyone will reach a point where they reach the peak. I mean, I, I even, I think I've reached the peak that I can reach making anime content right now there is mm. just like to me there's just like a cap yeah. of like just purely anime yeah. content and like it's i've i've tried for years to break through that cap but i just don't think the audience is there at the moment for every yeah. one hundred thousand youtube channels yeah there is one that will get a, a breakout that does well and blows up mm. yeah out of the those channels that blow up there is maybe one in ten that understands what they need to do to change their content and to keep evolving, to have an everlasting like presence on the platform. Yeah. You know, people like, uh, you know, Michael Reeves mm. had like a few videos that blew up, 
and yeah. he understood what he needed to do. I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe he did. I don't know if he did. It could have been sh sheer dumb luck, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. But he was making moves and he was making the content and upgrading the things in the mm. places that needed to be upgraded. You know, I yeah. felt I, maybe Michael Reeves doesn't feel like he'd blow up. But I, I when I watched Michael Reeves and he did the whole fucking when his whole branding was the laser pointer in the eye guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, that that was how he started, and uh, he just blew up from mm. there. And he kept riding the wave, and he kept doing what was right. You know, because a lot of people, and more often than not, the channels that do die are ones that had massive explosions in growth. Mm. Yeah. That's the what scares me actually. Because if you have massive growth, something is going, you've kind of hit the nail on the head in so many ways and you probably don't understand why. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you, this is just sheer luck to you. And, yeah. and the you first instinct is to go- Keep doing the I'll same do thing. do that again. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, because you know, when you when you first do it and you have uh, steady growth, mm -hmm. like yeah. I think all of us have had pretty steady growth, I'd say. None yeah. of us have had months where we've blown up insane amounts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you you get you afford the cushion to make the mistakes yeah. of uploading repetitive content, realizing that's not the way to do it. Yeah. You get to slowly make all these mistakes. Yeah. And and it gives you kind of like a, a very nice cushion of I can make these mistakes and then I can learn from them. It's it's like the buffer that you get. Yeah. Because to me, the, the biggest thing that scares me when I see a, like maybe an up and coming YouTuber or maybe like a new YouTube make, making content on the platform is when they have one or two videos that blow up. It's it, and then it's a, it's a pattern I see where you have, you have one or two videos that get millions and millions of views, <sighs> mm. and then the next video gets like twenty k views. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like I've seen that so many times. Yeah. Like uh, like Mr Beast, right? Mr yeah. Beast. Uh, blew up on some weird fucking videos, like yeah, yeah. counting, counting to, to 100,000. Yeah, what yeah. A like insane 10,000 IQ move. Yeah. Yeah. And then he just kept building on it. He never, he never ever re repeated something for too long. Yeah, You know, he, he repeated it a little bit, which is fine. You can do that. I'm not saying don't repeat ideas. He, he deviated like, or he, or he, yeah, you he, he made like, like a derivative derivation. You know, so then the he would, well, yeah. he would do something like watching Logan Paul everyday bro for 10 hours, was yeah. One yeah. Of them, right? Or 24 <laughs> hours, right? <laughs> so he took what was I'm successful Paul, about the actually. one video yeah, sorry, Jake Paul. Wow, <laughs> fake YouTuber. Terrible shit. He took that. He took the aspect that people liked, which is watching something for an absurd amount of time or doing something, absurd, and then applying it to something else, and it worked. Mm. And then he realized, okay, now I'm getting all the success. How do I then? What's what's kind of the virality here? What's what's yeah. enticing people? It's just the in, yeah. in, an insane, absurd nature of what he's doing. Mm. So then he decided, I'm going to spend a shit ton of money, which is like the next best step. If you can waste a ton of time, what goes hand in hand with wasting time? spending too much money. Yeah. They're yep. two sides of the same coin. Like it's the same thing Yeah, and, and it's genius. Yeah, he, he was just the master of making content that was so ridiculous that no one could emulate it. Yeah, no one, no one wanted to. And no to. one wanted to emulate I mean, it. I mean, what watching Mr. Beast, right? It's just, it's just like- It's a masterclass in YouTube. I'm, I'm just like, I'm watching Mr. Beast and like every time he makes something new or makes new moves or something, it's like, you know you know when like, you feel like, you feel, you, you feel like that side character in an anime that's just like, okay, this is the genius character and I'm just merely the side character in his story. That's you're, what I feel like watching Mr. The, Beast, you're man. The side character that has to commentate every movie he's making, right? It's, yeah, like, yeah. it's like, I can't believe he just did that move. What's that? I'll explain it. <laughs> like when, when he just like fucking opened a burger chain, I was just like, That's you genius. are yeah. fucking mad. But that is like the most genius move yeah. I could ever see anyone doing. Cause no one's, no one's even close to his genius. And like, I, I don't know, like, I, I think part of it is just experience. Cause like Mr. Beast went so many years making so many different types of content. And yeah. then he blew up, like, I think like, seven years into his YouTube yeah. career. Mm -hmm. So he just has a lot of experience under his belt, but there is just a natural genius to oh, some yeah. of the stuff that he does that is just unmatched yeah. by every other content creator mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, God forbid, there are so many channels out there right now that are trying to do something of similar taste to what Mr. Beast is I mean, doing. I mean, I think even like, varying levels I, I think success. we'd be lying if like we hadn't taken some kind of idea or concept oh, of from Mr. Beast I mean, he, onto our own channel. Of course, right? he of made course. spending money a cool thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly, like, right? People, that's why I'm, many of my titles is money in it because it just yeah. it works. You know? Yeah, 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 exactly. And I think every YouTuber has done at least one video where they've tried to do something similar to varying levels of success. Yeah, I mean, right? I mean, you, see, you often, you see kind of, you see content creators, like you see these type of content creators come on the platform every so often mm. where they just like, they're so ahead of the game that they just like completely revolutionize the content on the platform. Mm. Like Casey Neistat. I remember when like every vlogger tried to be Casey Neistat yeah. because he was just, at, when he first started making the vlogs that he did, which was just like taking, taking, 
a day and instead of just making like this handy cam vlog, but just actually making it kind of like a short film. Yeah. And that was just like, that was revolutionary for the time. And like, nobody could touch him for the longest time. Yeah, because he had to be insane to do what he was doing. Yeah, he, oh he my was, God. That man got like four hours of sleep and he had like a family. And like this shit was insane. Like the, the amount of shit he was doing in a day, I felt exhausted watching. And he has like and a then, factory full of cameras. Yeah, and then he went <laughs> and then he went home and edited it. And I'm like, yeah. I, I, I would rather shoot myself. Yeah. <laughs> Like Have honestly, ever, this yeah. this looked insane. It's not, dude. Just like daily vlogs, just I'm in general. I'm totally like, not surprised insane. that he got burnt out and quit doing it. Yeah. Like, I, you know, anyone. Have, have you ever seen the film Limitless? Yeah, mm. yeah. I, like, I feel like. I feel like if there's any real life example of someone who's discovered that drug, it was Casey, Casey Neistat, Neistat when he first got, like when he yeah, first started blowing up, man. Because my God, like it's it's like it's such an example of someone who's just like, how how are you finding this many hours in the day, man? Hey, you are using a hundred percent of your brain, man. Brain, yeah, you've, you've discovered the limitless drug. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> it's insane. I just, I mean, so much respect to the dude, but like, mm. just Jesus Christ. Yeah. He Holy really set fuck. the bar high. <laughs> Holy fuck. Sure, I, yeah. I get exhausted thinking about what he was doing. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's insane. We don't, you, we don't even do a tenth of what he no, does. No, no, no. Right? Yeah. My God, like I, I've had like these past three months have possibly been the most busiest three months of my life. Mm. And it's still like, it's nothing compared to what, whatever the fuck that he went through at his peak. For years For as well. years as yeah. well. I get exhausted taking a shit, let alone just like, <laughs> thinking about doing what he's doing. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I can't, I don't have energy for that. <laughs> Jesus. Like, okay, so like, how long, how long did it take you doing work on YouTube before you realized, man, it's uh, it's, it's fucking tiring doing videos. <laughs> like, I like, cause I feel like, um, I feel like every YouTuber goes through the phase where like YouTube making videos at some point was just easy. It was just nah. like, I'm getting, I'm getting paid to yeah, do something that yeah. is my hobby. It's where you first make a video and you're like, I don't, I don't think I like this. I don't think I like this video. I think I hate this. It's when you start to become like really perfectionist about your videos, I feel. Cause like when you're starting off, you again, you have that honeymoon period of like everything you make is like, oh, that's cool. That's fun. Let's do that. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Yeah, let's go. But then as you start to make more content and as you start to grow and as you start mm -hmm. to realize, oh, I got to like up my quality in the content and up my quality of the cameras or whatever. That's when you start to get a little more self-reflective on your own content, right? And you start yeah. to think, oh, that video I made last week that I was loving. Now that I look at it, could have done a lot better on that. Maybe maybe this next video will do a lot better. Yeah. And I feel that's the point where you start to be like, oh, okay, now this is like serious now. <laughs> this is like a job now. That yeah. It's like kind of, not only is my rent and like my living on the line for this for the success of this video, but also like just my artistic integrity of making content now yeah. is kind of on the line. And I, and I don't- Artistic integrity. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, not every YouTuber can say that same thing, obviously. <laughs> I feel like I don't. I feel like I, I just make stuff I like, I don't know. Right, but you know, but at the same time, you'd be lying if you said that you didn't care about how your video looked or how- Oh no, of course not. I, lo I, I love making a good video. Yeah. I mean. So I feel in a lot of ways, like as much as you maybe don't want to admit, that yeah. is in a sense, artistic integrity, guess, right? Like you want to make the I best- you want to make the best shit you can make. Yeah, you, you right. want to make shit you are proud of. Yeah, or exactly. you, that you enjoy. That's yeah. that's that's just been my philosophy, mm. and that's why I've never like paid too much attention to the algorithm and stuff like that. Maybe maybe seeing what kind of content's doing well or stuff like that. But mm. at the end of the day, I'd like it sounds like such generic advice or whatever, but it's kind of true in a sense where just good good content is king. At the, at the end of the day, there's some there's some videos that will not perform as well on the algorithm, mm. but. For the most part, if you make good content, people are gonna watch it. And mm. then at every so often you get someone like Darman, which just <laughs> fucking blows your mind. Cause you're just like, okay, I don't understand. But that's I the thing, right? I, I just, okay, maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe my entire understanding of this platform has just been warped, but. But that's the thing, right? At the end of the day, I think everyone is asking the question, what is good content? <laughs> like what the fuck does that even mean? Right? Because like to some people that's Darman. And yeah. to other people, it's a gig video. Like, we, we don't know. What, I mean, what is I mean, good content at the yeah, end of the I, day? I think Darman is, I mean, you can't say it's bad. It's very well produced. It's mm. just, yeah. I think it's just so absurd. And mm. just the amount of views is so absurd. Yeah. So that's what's just kind of crazy, right. I think. It's just, it's just insane. <laughs> the amount of views this man brings in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I can understand. Yeah, I, I think that's the biggest thing because he, he makes well-produced content. Mm. And it's, it's just like, it's just not correlational to like, kind of like the views that yeah, we're seeing just, on this platform. Like, mm. These videos right. are amazingly produced, but the story is just fucking bizarre. <laughs> like, and it's, just, it's like a child wrote it. It's really strange because everything else is amazing. Yeah, right. like th this, these videos are shot better than like almost any other YouTube video. Mm -hmm. Like it's insane. 
Yeah, I don't know. Like, I've always found it fascinating, like, the kind of whole question of, like, what is, like, a successful video? What is, like, a good successful video, right? Because, like, you know, if you're talking about, like, okay, is a good is good okay. content one that has quality? Yeah. Right? I mean, then, like, how do you explain the fucking chunk chart video that has 10 million views, you know? That's, that's like, that's got quality. Yeah, I, don't, right? I don't know what you're talking about, yeah, Joey. Right? <laughs> but, like, on, on, a, on a traditional sense, it's not. Well, it's, yeah. like, it's like, you know, like, report of the week, right? You just, yeah. right. it's like- and production quality is terrible. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> yeah. Like, but it's like, it's amazing because it's it's what made YouTube great. And I feel that's like a big question that like a lot of people who are starting off YouTube I, ask, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, like they go up to the YouTuber who's been on the platform for a while and being like, okay, so you're telling me that in order to be successful, I need to make good content. Explain to, that. To, what, to, what is good me, content? Good content is anything that, you know, you've taken the time to consider every aspect of the content. You you consider audio, you consider visuals. Like mm. you watch a report of the week video. Yeah, the audio quality isn't professional, but mm. you're like, you can hear it. It sounds good enough. Mm. It's not un, it's not unpleasant. You can watch it. It's good enough. You know, he doesn't try and egregiously clickbait it. He doesn't chase trends. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like bad content to me is someone who is just chasing trends for the sake of it. Mm. Yeah. The clickbait is just disgustingly egregious. <laughs> They're making X thousands of dollars, never considered to upgrade equipment, you know, yeah. stuff like that. You know, if you're if you're a full time YouTuber and you're using like a USB mic, I'm just like, what? Bro, they're like they're literally a hundred bucks and yeah. the audio quality difference is insane. Like, yeah. There's no excuse in my mind, uh, other than oh, I don't want to learn, it's too complicated. It's not that difficult. Yeah. It's really but, uh, not but that I, difficult. I normally notice that the people who do trace chase trends have like have like a set shelf life. Yeah, like, yeah. They, they will you, they will get massive amounts of views for like one or two years at most, and then or, or you'll go to their channel. One video will have a million views. One yeah. will have a hundred k. Yeah. yeah, and it's like it's like that's how you can tell. Like that's a channel where you're like probably not making the most consistent stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or that your content, you're 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 clearly just you know appealing to a wider audience that doesn't yeah. have so own, much care about you. Your only so is worth as much as your worst performing video. Mm. Yeah, like if you're, if a video that doesn't get in the algorithm doesn't do well, but people still show up and watch it. Mm. Yeah, that's how you can kind of tell. I guess that's the, your core fan. Yeah, base, that's yeah. that's like what you know the people who really would turn up. Mm. You know, and that's what if you can pull in, you know, uh, X amount of views that is like a healthy amount on your worst performing video. That mm. says a lot. I think. Mm. Yeah, uh, if you are pulling in a million views, and then you pull in fifty k. I think something's gone horribly wrong there. Um, <laughs> and you're, clearly you're doing something that's not healthy or sustainable. Mm, yeah. And sure, you can keep chen chasing Chen, chasing Chen, but not, sorry, I pronounce that Chasing Chen, <laughs> chasing Chen. Demon Slayer, chasing trend. Demon Slayer, Demon Slayer. But then that's also <laughs> where you see YouTubers who start to do questionable things mm. because they get so desperate for yeah. these views yeah. that they start yeah. doing these horrible video ideas. Um, you know, uh, like actual, like just clickbait, you know, some real egregious stuff, you know, yeah. it's like where the prank channels, you know, you can look at this clear example is where they were chasing pranks so much that it became to the point where okay, it was no longer a prank. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, they, they started, they would do stuff like pranks in the hood where these like white guys would just go and like, Slap oh, them, I've like seen some black them. Guys they they yeah, would just yeah, try. Yeah. It was it was just like a try to get shot challenge or something yeah, like that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like, what the fuck is this? And then they would also. It got to the point where every single prank channel was paying actors, mm -hmm. and then there was like kissing pregnant women prank, and it's just like this is just like what is this? Like this is so beyond clickbait now, where yeah. you have to, to to get views, you have to go into such egregious territory, you know. And with the family channels where they would just put their fucking. Here's my here's my child's uh, vasectomy for ten million views. You know, it's like, what is this? This is not this is not something that should be child's on YouTube. Child's vasectomy. <laughs> it's just, you know, this is, I, you you joke, right? But this is the almost the extent of these fucking family channels. There's so would much do. wrong with that. Sentence. They would be like, oh yeah, today my children are gonna fight to see who's the strongest. Ten million. Views. Last one to survive gets Burger King. I joke, but some of these channels were doing such egregious stuff to their ch yeah. their children yeah, yeah. that you you m may as well have put that up for fuck's sake. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like when you chase trends and you're the kind of person who is willing to put morals aside to get the views, mm. is when you really see the worst side of YouTube come out. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying if you chase trends, you're going to be doing some horrible stuff on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But it is it There's is a like tasteful a tasteful way of doing it. Th th there is a there is an uncomfortable. Uh, similarity to the people who start to chase trends, who so sort of starting to get to the questionable area, yeah. and th there's a kind of there's a definitely a, a spectrum yeah. of yeah. distastefulness, as I like yeah. to yeah, yeah, and yeah. you can tell when someone's on it. Yeah, <laughs> no, because like for me, like when I think what when I think about what kind of content I want to make or what 
what what good content is i just i just think back to that like like i just think back to that like seed in bakuman or something where mm. it's just like i remember like the editor of shonen jump in that series said like doesn't matter what you make as long as it's interesting mm. like that, that that to me like that to me is like what sticks out in my mind whenever when, whenever anyone thinks you know whatever the algorithm is whatever video you want to make it just has to be interesting to someone yeah, yeah unfortunately and uh but we've, we've seen the kind of like toxic content in traditional media right mm -hmm. like tabloids right it's yeah. like you're you're ruining someone's life to get content mm. yeah you know it's uh it's, paparazzi <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's it's a thing as old as time if someone wants it as someone and someone's consuming it someone's gonna make it yeah mm. whether it's good or bad or not is, is another question entirely you know like nobody respects tmz yeah, but mm. TMC exists because yeah. it gets views. You know what I yeah, mean. Yeah, and the yeah. same is on YouTube. You know, these channels are going to exist because people are going to watch them. Yeah. Naked Yoga exists on YouTube. Should it? I don't know, but people are watching it. Mm. What do you think of uh, drama channels? What's what's? Because I, I feel like this. That's, that's that's a can of worms. That, I, I feel like there's such a fine line with drama channels from yeah. being like acceptable to just pure cancer, mm. right? It's, 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 it's such a- I wonder who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. It's such a, it's such a like fine line to, uh, to tread, right? And it, I think, I think when it comes to drama channels, there's the right way to do it and there's the wrong way to do oh, it. I like scarce, scarce yeah. is chill. I was about yeah. to say, I think I scarce, like scarce is a drama channel done right because he l merely states the facts. Yeah, that's it. Like, and there's there. I feel there are too many drama channels that think that they're also commentary channels. When I feel those are two very different things. Right? Yeah, like you can be a drama channel that like scarce who just states the facts. Oh, like I, this no, is what I, happened. I don't want to hear their opinion. Yeah. Oh. yeah, and then there are people who are like, here's the drama. Here's why you should be on that person's side. Like that's cancerous. Yeah, right. Like just just be like, just say what happened. Just state the fact and let the audience make up their own mind. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, to be honest. I think that's why I like the right opinion as well, because at least like he he does he does put his opinion in it, or like whenever yeah. he's breaking down whatever drama or whatever. But that's not the core of his video. That's right? not the core of his yeah. video, right? He he's breaking down what's happening and he he separates that from his opinion. It's it's, it's like a clear divide, and that's mm. that's kind of what I like because he yeah. he allows you to make up your own mind, mm. but then he also you know. He he also puts in his own opinion as well, his mm. own perspective, and I feel like that's that's kind of the right way to go about it. And and you know, you know, even even sometimes there's might there might be drama channels that do that, but they're also just toxic personalities as well. Right, and you know? and again, it like uh, I feel it really does come down to like the personality of the presenter as well. Like if you yeah. if you sell yourself as this kind of like like you know starting a mob like talk you know toxic kind of guy who yeah. then also gives your opinion about a certain piece of drama that. Let's be real. You're not fucking involved with. Like, yeah. You just saw it, and you're like, "Oh, dude, check the, check out this fight that's happening right now. Let's let's root for one person, right? That's when it becomes toxic. But if you're just like, "Here's what's happening. You probably heard of it. Uh, here are the details. Make up your own mind." Yeah. You know, it's like I'm not involved. I'm I'm just the messenger. Do with do with it what you will. Then I think I think in a lot of ways that's fine. Yeah. But again, it really just depends on like how you present it and how you present yourself. Yeah, this is why I can never be a drama channel because oh. I, I I would just like overthink it so much that I probably wouldn't even make the video. This right? is so much drama. How do you keep up with it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's probably exhausting. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I like hot like ninety nine percent of the time I just don't give a shit. Honestly, one thing that like we we've we've talked about toxic anime fandoms, but I think in general. Compared to like the other communities and the other other things going on in other places, mm. I think AniTube is like kind of like chill and drama free. I mean, yeah. we've we've had like our drama, but compared to what we've seen elsewhere, it's been like pretty tame. Yeah, right? it's pretty mm. chill now. It's yeah, pretty chill. it used to not be that chill, but I feel like it's really. Chill I, I feel like even when it was not that chill, it was like still way more chill than it was. Other it places. was way more contained. I yeah, feel. yeah, like yeah, it yeah. wasn't like the other communities where like people from other communities would hear about but, a different. But community. the thing is with communities, right? And then drama mm. is that it, it's, you know, as much as people want to, unless someone does something really scandalous, mm. like really fucked and that, that transcends beyond the community. Mm. And it's just so fucked that even like normal people are like, whoa, mm. you know, that's a, that's a rare circumstance. But other than that, the drama in the community is caused and, and solely responsible as by like the biggest creators in the community. 
Yeah. Mm. If the biggest creators are making drama in a space, then there's drama in that space. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if, if we're anime fans and we start doing something that's really fucked, like we, we better watch ourselves then. <laughs> no, it's, true, it's true. You know, if, if, yeah. If, if, there's, if, there, if, we, if we do something, it's 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 kind of in the anime community, right? And yeah. it's, it's kind yeah. of that would be considered. Not saying that we're so big that drama exists, but like when, mm. you know, the community is kind of almost dictated at times by like the biggest people in it. Oh well, yeah. Yeah. And uh, that behavior is reflected downwards. So if you mm. if you get into shit and you say a bunch of shit, yeah, the community is going to kind of mirror that. This episode is sponsored by Honey. We all shop online. We do. And we've all seen that promo code field taunt us at the checkout. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon mm. codes is a thing of the past. Thanks to God. Honey is a free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Damn. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online that can range from tech sites to gaming products, anything you can think of. Now that is pretty poggers. <laughs> Imagine it. Mm -hmm. You're shopping on one of your favorite sites. I'm imagining it. When you check out, the honey button drops down. All you have to do is click yeah. apply coupon. Oh my Ooh. God. Wait a few seconds as honey uh -huh. searches for coupons it can find for yeah. that site. If honey finds a working coupon. <gasps> Is that it? You'll watch the prices drop. That's it. That's it. Nothing oh. else. Damn, what did you save money on, Joey? Oh, I save money on pizza because pizza is expensive as hell in Japan. <laughs> Just how much did you save, Joey? About like 15, 20 bucks, God which damn. is a lot considering again, like pizza in Japan is so, so goddamn expensive. So you just got expensive. a normally priced pizza. I got a normally priced pizza Thanks when pizza honey. is like a luxury in this country. Thanks to Honey. So thank damn. you, Honey. Honey has found it's over 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. Two billion dollars? That's yeah. not a real amount of money. That's one second of Jeff Bezos. <laughs> if you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free <sighs> savings. It's literally free and installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. So you can get Honey for free at yes. joinhoney.com slash trash taste. That's joinhoney.com slash trash taste. Links in the description below. Thanks to Honey for supporting this podcast. Back to the episode. Circling way back earlier on. Okay. Uh, about passion projects. Mm. Yeah. You know, any any passionate projects you've been working on recently other than the fate one? Um, I guess. I, I, I kind of don't want to talk yeah, about it. Yeah, I almost don't want to talk. Fair enough. Because, because, because like I talked about the fate video and people were asking about me about it. <laughs> For an entire year, because like here, here's the thing: when you're working up on a passion project, yeah. it feels great. You just you just want to talk about it. You want to get it out, and then you forget that you have to make it as well. That's literally me with the Oyasumi Pun Pun video. Like, <laughs> people have been asking. I've been writing that shit for years now. It's like, when is it? When is it coming out? And I'm like, don't fucking rush the passion. Okay. <laughs> I, I probably recorded one of my favorite one of my favorite videos uh, the other day and it was yeah. so fun and it was yeah. very fun. Everything about it was great. Uh, I filmed, uh, it should be out by the time this is uh, airing, hopefully. Yeah. If not, I guess it's a surprise. What's coming up? Uh, I, I filmed a video where I worked at a gay bar. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It was uh, it was very fun. They were just so welcoming. Everyone oh, was just yeah, so yeah, chill. Nice, nice. It was just a great time. <laughs> I, I almost forgot I had cameras on me because I was having a great time <laughs> reacting and hanging out with the boys. Like we were just, we were just lads. Talking. Yeah, man. They were just. It was just so fun, and especially in Japan, you know, because mm. uh, people mm. are very closed <laughs> off here. Yeah, and it was very much just having a guy be like, "Hey, what's your dick size?" <laughs> and I was like, "Whoa." I'm glad yeah. you asked. I'm like, <laughs> well, that's the way to break the ice. Like, that's yeah, something you don't is, see in Japan, this especially. Is great. I haven't had this in Japan. I haven't had this level of. Uh, was he a JoJo uh, fan? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, he was. Did he see an unsucked dick? Yeah. <laughs> it was after I sing. I sang sort of 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 an otaku uh, gay bar. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, and and in Shinjuku? Yeah, in Shinjuku. Nice. Yeah. So, in the like gay district. So you mm. could just go and sing uh, sing anime songs yeah. with, the, with the boys. Hell that yeah. Sounds, that sounds amazing. It was such a fun bar. So welcoming. It was just yeah. great. Mm. And uh, yeah, I just had an amazing time. It was great. And it was one of those videos where I didn't really think much about it before I filmed it. But I was like, damn, this is probably one of the most fun videos I've ever filmed. That's yeah. the best feeling. Just had drinks with the boys. Mm. Yeah. Literally it. Yeah, it's really weird actually meeting anime fans here in Japan because you talk to some of them and it's almost like it's even less popular than it is outside well, of Japan, so normal, right? Because yeah. it's, it's really weird because sometimes you meet an anime fan and you, and you say you watch anime as well. They get so excited. Yeah. And they're, they're just like- I thought oh, I was like, the only one. Oh my God, what's your favorite <laughs> anime? And, and what would what, you like watching? And, and, and it's, it's so weird because it's, it's almost being transported back like 10 years ago, yeah. except it's it's here in Japan. I yeah. think I think it's because, you know, in Japan, you know, they don't have a massive uh, 
social climate. You know, it isn't. Mm -hmm. You know, people aren't exactly the most social to one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And especially think, otakus. Yeah, and I think yeah, having yeah. a solid icebreaker like you like anime. Mm. Yeah, you know, it makes any anyone comfortable. Who, who, if you, if it doesn't matter who you are, if you both like anime, you can talk about something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean, like, and I feel like in Japan, where again, people aren't very socially outgoing, it's it's such a good icebreaker and a very comfortable one. Mm. Yeah, and I find that especially when you're a foreigner as well, yeah, people feel a lot more comfortable talking to you because they feel like, oh, you like the same things as me, even though you're yeah. from a different place. Yeah. And, and yeah, it definitely makes them feel more comfortable. I feel it's especially as well because unlike in the West where like the whole like anime community and like otaku thing is more of like community-based thing, even yeah. in real life, here in Japan, it's very much like a lone wolf type of thing. Like I feel like- Yeah, the, people, like, people the, don't talk about like, it. Like the true like, like hardcore otakus here, I mean, for one, don't really go out and socialize you won't, you won't naturally. Meet them. Oh, yeah, that's you won't, true, you that's true. You won't go, you won't, <laughs> they won't be outside like, you know, being like walking around being like, I like this thing, do you like it? Like, they're not gonna be like that. They're gonna stick to like 2chan, right? And talk yeah, about yeah. their pro, you know, passion there, right? Obviously, yeah. but you know, and I feel that's why like, especially in Japan, that's so much more rare to come across. Yeah. Because for one, it's like, oh, I didn't know about this whole other side of the community because a lot of these otakus in Japan don't really interact with other people in that, even sure. within the same community, let yeah. alone, you know, across the fucking ocean. Right? Yeah, because like you, you're here in Japan and you, you you talk to a Japanese person and even if they're not an anime fan, they're like aware of like, obviously love a lot of anime because mm. we're here in Japan, but like you meet an actual person who, watch, who watches anime and it's like I'm transported back to like the early periods of when I got into anime because right. I've never seen someone's face just, I've never seen a Japanese person's face light up so much when you say you watch Jojo or when you say you watch some other like, some other anime that's maybe not Ava or One Piece, you know, because yeah. those are like, those like the two mainstream anime here that even like yeah. non-anime fans watch. Yeah. And I, I, I guess like, that's just not what I expected when I moved to Japan. Cause mm. I thought, I thought at least like, I, I didn't know, cause I'd, I'd only heard about, you know, the otaku culture from basically from third hand accounts, right? Mm. I'd never actually had experienced it myself. So I didn't know that anime fans just are still, almost like underground here in, in yeah. some in some senses, right? And that, that just kind of like blew my mind. Yeah, I mean, I feel maybe within like the past, like say 10, 20 years, yeah. like much like the West, right? I feel it's become a little bit more open and accepting and like, you know, yeah. you know, like even in the West, right? Kids 10, 20 years ago would get bullied for watching anime. Now you get bullied for not watching anime. I yeah. feel in Japan, it's kind of become the same thing now, except still at the end of the day, like the true like hardcore otakus are still very much underground because yeah. I think I think they're scared to come out. Yeah. But but I feel like, you know, you said that they're underground, but you know, like every time you watch a documentary, anything about Japan and otakus, you always saw the hardcore one. Yeah. They'd yeah. be like, this is, uh, this is a uh, uh, Tanaka. He has spent $10,000 this year on Love Life. And it's yeah. like, all right, great. <laughs> yeah, Fantastic. but I think yeah. as well as as well because like just the term otaku in Japan is just so much more than someone who likes anime. Like yeah. you, you have like train otakus, you have military otakus. Like yeah, just yeah. the types of fans and like hardcore fans that you wouldn't really see outside Bro, of Japan. I saw yeah. a hardcore America otaku. Uh, in, oh, did you actually? I was just at my train station, mm, and this guy yeah. was wearing a full uh, what is it? Bald eagle? Is that what they call? What's, it? What? What's the American Eagle? Bald Eagle. Bald Eagle, Bald Eagle yeah. right? Bald Eagle shirt, yeah. uh, a, a cowboy hat, like a 10 like, gallon one. <laughs> yeah. He had the uh, pins of America yeah. on it. He was, he was wearing d the bluest <laughs> denim jeans I've ever seen. And he was wearing cowboy boots. I nice. You not. <laughs> And then he was just Japanese and had like, was wearing glasses. And I was like, this is just so bizarre. He was just at my train that's station. A, that's some drip, right? Yeah, yeah, at yeah, my yeah. train station. And he was doing the like the fucking hands and, <laughs> hands and belt waiting for the the state uh, the train to come. And I was like, fuck yeah, like what the fuck, man? That's so cool. <laughs> I wanted to be like, Konishiwa. <laughs> I was just like, this is so bizarre. I was like, I want to know the background. I was like, I, w I want that guy to come on Trash Taste. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah, right? I, I want to know this dude's it's story. Just so, uh, yeah. I don't know, it's just like, it, cause like, especially like, you know, every now and then when you go to like a train station in Japan, especially like uh, like the Shinkansen, like the bullet yeah. trains, you sometimes see, you know, some train otakus. Oh yeah, those oh, yeah, pictures. Yeah. And they're always taking pictures with these like massive, like bird watching lenses. People do that yeah. in the UK though as well. It's big, big, uh, uh, train spotting or whatever, yeah. and uh, mm. the planes, yeah, and you always see them at the airport. Yeah, but like I always find like that side of the otaku fan base to be just so much more interesting. I feel, and maybe it's because I know nothing about it, mm -hmm. but also at the same time, it's like it feels so much more like mysterious because you almost never see those kinds of people interacting, even within 
the same community members. Yeah, because you also right? you also see a lot more shows made about uh, uh, attackers, uh, traditional attackers, I guess, for mm. anime. Yeah, because it's just like, oh, look at this guy. He spends twenty grand a month on some PNG. You know, yeah, what I mean? yeah. Like, it's a lot easier to it's a get weirder. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing, right? Yeah. Is that they want to. These film crews just want something weird. It's really hard to just make fun of a guy who just likes trains. Yeah, you know yeah, what I yeah. mean? It's That's like, true. That's true. you know, uh, you say what you will, but a lot of the time, these documentaries that would just would go into a dude's house and be like, "Wow, look at him, look at the state. He's got all these anime figures." Mm. You know, they're, they're, they're trying to make fun of it, really. Yeah, oh, yeah. Because yeah. I, 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 I feel like there's such a such a big divide between maybe like say anime. And then the otaku anime, yeah. you know what I mean? Basically, like if if you see if you see if you see your series in like Akihabara or something, then yeah. it's probably going to be looked down upon yeah. by a lot of people in Japan. Because I, I remember we uh we hang out with our friend's uh, girlfriend, and she was like a mad like a mad otaku. And I remember talking to her, and she was like, "Yeah, I got bullied in school for liking anime." Mm. I'm just like, "What? You're Japanese." What? How, yeah. how, how? How is this a thing? How? how, well, how? Yeah, I think it's, it's so common that it's almost cool to not like it and do something else, mm. right? Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Like the whole okay. When when someone all right, this is this is a controversial take. It, when when someone is like severely into something, like a show, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I was about to describe myself there actually. <laughs> I was like, because you know, you see these you see these things where like they make their whole life about something. Right, this is me with Jojo in it. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really is. Yeah. I saw something, uh, you know, when I remember that watching the show one time and this woman had like everything in her life was Barbie. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, the one living in LA, right? The Japanese woman. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've so seen that. Everything yeah. she yeah. owned was Barbie. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, is this like something that like can happen to anyone? Or is this something that like, he he said he he ponders while his JoJo posters are in the background <laughs> listen, with the JoJo listen, statues. I love, I, and, I, and the ten thousand dollar JoJo merch. He says listen, wearing JoJo his JoJo reference. suit. Listen, yeah. I I love JoJo, but I don't feel like because when I see them talk about their show, I don't I don't feel like they talk about it the way I feel about JoJo. You know what I mean? I think that's yeah. what every one of those like obsessive collectors think. Yeah. As well, but right. the way they talk Cut to about Connor in 10 years. Yeah, right. <laughs> this could Here's be, my JoJo toilet. This could be just taken out of context and just clip, clip with me talking about JoJo. I realize that. But like when I see them, there's almost like this like, uh, like this obsession that feels uh, unhealthy. Mm -hmm. You mm. could probably say that. You could probably accuse me of being the same. Yeah. But you know, when I when I, I just I just like the style and I like decorating my office in a certain way. Mm. Like yeah. Outside of that, none of my rooms are JoJo. You know, yeah. there's nothing else. Uh, are, are you talking about like when someone's entire house- It's like their entire existence becomes a collection of this thing. Right. Yeah. And I just wonder, I'm like, is that something that just happens to anyone? Or is that- I think or, so. Or is it something that maybe something's happened to you where you, you know, you've had a, an experience or maybe you've been raised in a certain way mm. and, and that, that makes you more receptive to being obsessed with something? I mean, I'm, I'm, what I'm, do you think? I'm sure both sides can happen, but I think- yeah. at the Psychiatrist, end of psychologist <laughs> in the chat, can you let me know? I think yeah. at the end of the day, it's just about like, how much do you like this certain thing, right? Yeah, how yeah. much are you willing to sacrifice? I don't know, a part of me thinks there has to be something where you have to be more susceptible to addictive tendencies uh, in uh, certain I, ways. I, I, I also think there's just some people where for whatever reason in their life, this, this one thing, means so much to them personally. Yeah. Maybe mm. it came along at the right time. Right, Maybe right, right. it helped them through something, but like they are so personally attached to this mm. thing. Yeah, I'm not trying to bash you by the way. I just want to like actually have yeah, a discussion I, I, about I, it. I think, I think that's the real reason. Mm. Cause I mean, I, I feel like a lot of idol fans fall into that category where, right, right. where you know, they, they want to support these idols because they gave them something, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I feel like that's more likely. I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of people who maybe have addictive tendencies as well, mm. right? I, yeah, I, I guess because the, the, the whole thing that sucks about talking with idol uh, stuff specifically is that, you know, here in Japan, I mean, there was just some stuff that's fucked. Like, mm -hmm. you know, there was this one- Well, issue. I mean, the idol industry in general was- Yeah, yeah, it's, it's okay, well, yeah, there's so much predatory shit that goes on in that. Yeah. And also, I can't remember, I don't know if I've talked about this on Trash Taste, but there was this one uh, video on YouTube done by some, I can't know which news agency it was. It was some, not, not super mainstream one. Mm. They did like a documentary with this British guy and he just goes to idol stuff. Yeah. But not normal idol stuff. 13 year old idols mm. in Japan. Mm. And uh, man, this is an uncomfortable watch. Because yeah. it is like these dudes uh, go to these uh, concerts with this thirteen-year-old girl, yeah, and uh, she's dancing and stuff. And uh, the guy goes around and just asks these guys, like, "Hey, why do you like it?" 
And the the answers they give are just really like uncomfortable. It's they don't say it. They don't say what you you know what I'm thinking. Yeah. But but they they don't really give a good argument as to not that. Yeah. There's yeah. actually there's a really good documentary I saw. I think it's on Netflix called Tokyo Idols. Yeah, I've seen that one. And I watched yeah, that one. Yeah. yeah, but that one wasn't that bad because that that I I really liked that one because I felt like it wasn't an insulting look into yeah, it. No, it that was like an give... actual like in depth look. But it, at the it, same time, it was trying to give a, a I would say an unbiased look. Yeah. Into yeah. 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 I, I think that was just interesting. Yeah. I, I, I watched it and like you watch it and you don't you don't really want to, you, you don't judge any of the people there. You, yeah. It's just like, yeah. to me, it's just fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Right, I, how, how someone ends up in this situation where he, you know, they spend thousands and thousands of- Yeah, if mm. you want to give, if you're a 40 year old man and you want to give thousands of dollars to a 20 year old woman, that's fine by me. Mm. Yeah. I got no qualms about that, yeah. you know? You can do that. that. That's your that's your money. You do what you want with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like the one where it was like thirteen, I was like, come on, yeah, come yeah. on. I mean, bro. I haven't seen that video. You should watch it. I'll, I'll send you a link later. It's <laughs> just right. like, oh my god, dude. And mm. it's just like it's so obvious what's going on. And yeah, like, it's not a good look. Yeah. It's just one of those things where it's like, <laughs> some idol guy was like, man, these guys are making so much money off these idols, child idols, and it's like, no, 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 no. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, even if you don't mean it in that way yeah. that everyone's thinking, like, it's it doesn't help. Yeah. <laughs> it really is not a good look, I feel. Yeah, but like, like, especially living in Japan, I feel like Japan as a country, more than like any other country that I've seen or been to, like, I, I understand the word otaku here because there are so many, like, really obscure things that people just get obsessed with. Yeah. And like, it's, 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 there's no like definite pattern in it, but like, y we talk about anime otakus, but that's like the most, I'd say the most broad otaku there is in Japan. Cause oh, you yeah. meet, you meet people who are, who are obsessed with like really strange things. That's almost yeah. the most normal otaku. Yeah, yeah, it right. is, right? Yeah. It is, I think right? so. Cause like, when you look at in my strange way. addiction, you look at these like yeah. sand eating otakus. Yeah. Coffee <laughs> animal otakus. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you, <laughs> That, that's why it comes. That's why it comes to my mind because I feel like yeah. somebody who eats the stuffing in their mattress, which is a real thing, by the way. Yeah. I, I, I assume I assume TLC is a hundred percent rock solid with their journalism, and this is hundred yeah. percent accurate. Yeah, stage. of course. Um, I'm sure some of the stuff on TLC is staged. Um, some, probably most of it. But <laughs> yeah, um, you know, people who do the weird thing where they like eat only fries. Yeah, um, you know, I feel like that's that's got to be some sort of similarity to somebody who is obsessed with. Uh, a certain thing that dominates their whole life. I feel yeah. there's a big difference between an obsession and an addiction. You know what yeah, I mean? I yeah. feel I feel like you know when you are something is your identity. Yeah. You know it almost it is an addiction in some senses. Mm. I feel like obsession addiction. The line addiction blurred. to JoJo. This just sounds like an invention. Is it? Uh, is it <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is it? Is it? A, let's make I, it clear. Is it an addiction I, or is it an obsession? I am obsessed with the style of JoJo. <laughs> I am not addicted to JoJo. I that, don't. That sounds like denial. Day by, <laughs> day by day, I don't think about JoJo. I don't do anything to do with JoJo. Really, <laughs> your, your attitude I can, says otherwise. I can. I can not watch JoJo. I don't. I have can to quit anytime I, I, I like. Listen, I don't <laughs> suck cock every day. <laughs> Right, <laughs> you're not looking for the next one. Like, you know, Where is it? I, I, I can. I don't think about JoJo most days. Right? I, I know this sounds like a, this sounds like a meme. Right? This sounds like a meme. Yeah. I don't think about it most days. Okay. I just, I love the style. I love it in my room, and the suits are banging straight up fire. You can't deny. Okay. Yeah. Like even yeah. if you don't like JoJo, those suits are fire. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. If the suit looked like shit, I wouldn't buy it. <laughs> But it looks fire. No, it does. I'm, I'm not. I'm not denying, I'm not denying that. that. I'm not denying now, that. Now, that being said, <laughs> if I suddenly became uh, just I, everything about my life was JoJo, I only ever wore JoJo things. Mm. I wouldn't stop talking about JoJo. I, I, I can't. I know what you're going to say. There was a phase in my life where I, I did only talk about JoJo. That was a short period when I got into it, and I'm not proud of it. You know? yeah. I, I've changed for the better. I had an intervention. Gan told me I needed to stop. I did. I'm a changed man. <laughs> If only but, every JoJo fan could be but like also, that. But also, you know, uh, at the same time, I, I, I think I'm like, okay, I see these people who have these very severe addictions or something. Mm. And I think, okay, maybe something has gone wrong. Maybe yeah. it hasn't. But, the, but at the end of the day, I don't really care. You you seem happy. You're not hurting anyone. Do what you want. Mm. That's, that's how I and feel. And ultimately that's yeah. what it comes down to. But I am just fascinated of how one becomes addicted. 
to something like mm. that severely. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'm not trying to bash on it. I want to make that clear. I'm not trying to say, oh, it's fucked up or anything. I just want to know the process. Cause yeah, it's just I feel like because it's not a super normal thing to do because mm. it's not something that happens every day to everyone. Mm. Yeah. What happens to make someone super addicted to something? I just want to know. My strange Science addiction. Explain. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, it's always about the strange addiction, not yeah. how it became my strange addiction. Well, I just, that's I just, what I want to know. I just think, like, especially in Japan, uh, it's part of the reason why Japan is such a gold mine for content, right? Mm. It's just because, kind of, kind of like, so many people are so many are into so many niche things. Because when you when you make people have to. Uh, become so goddamn normal and so assimilated in society. Yeah. Anyone is dying to do anything different. Yeah, so yeah, I think that's exactly. why we get so many these niche and crazy. Like there's things. so many like niche bars yeah. and places which you know some some you've been to, some are still out there. Probably like we yeah. we're, we're like never like, to be found. Never probably. to be found because yeah. their entire childhood, their creativity is snuffed out. Yeah, <laughs> they don't get to be creative. Sure. So when they become an adult and they they can make money and they can live their life, you know, finally it's, can, it's that epiphany moment. Yeah, of they, like, can, they can I take can, control. I can be different. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I, I think that's part of like. Like part of the interesting thing about living in Japan is that you walk down the street somewhere and you just, you find this random place. And you're like, what the, who made this? Who, yeah. what, what like- Only what? in Japan. O o a lot of things are only like, in yeah. Japan. Living here, you just become to have such a good appreciation for people who really do just don't give a shit and love what they want here. Yeah. Because my God, life is hard here if you don't conform. <laughs> Yeah. If you don't do what everyone else is doing. Yeah, yeah. if you're the one sticking out. Yeah. It's, it's so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and so when I saw that, that guy rocking all his American attire, I thought, yeah. fuck man, the balls on this man. It's thank like, God, hell yeah. thank God he had a good pair of denim wow. jeans to contain those those giant balls. <laughs> you know, he rocked up oh. to a Japanese train station wearing that. Like yeah, that man did not give a single fuck what other people thought. Hell and, yeah, dude. And it, man, it makes you kind of happy because you're like, this man doesn't give a fuck what anyone else yeah. thinks yeah. My, my, my in Japan. It's funny because ever like since moving to Japan and living in Japan, my standard for what's become cool and badass has just become so much so warped compared to like <laughs> when I was living when I was living elsewhere. Because right. I, I remember this. I remember this one time. It was like. It was like a busy street in like Shinjuku, right? Mm. And uh, and we were we were all just like standing there waiting for the lights to change. And then one guy, I I I'm walking right behind this one guy, and and uh, he's walking towards this massive crowd, and like the lights are still red. Doesn't even flinch, doesn't even stop, just fucking walks. And Jay and Jay walks, mm. and I'm just like. What a badass! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Were, you know what, the, the, the emotion the I just, the, the emotion that I sorry, and this is going to be one hundred percent accurate. But you know, at the end of Shawshank Redemption, when uh, Dufresne finally breaks free, yeah. Yeah. that's how it feels. Never a Japanese man doesn't conform. You're like, yeah, the I, son of a bitch I, did I, it. And I'm the like, son of a bitch crawled through the mile long <laughs> pile of shit to do it. God damn! I'm like, he saw the red light that says not walks, and he it didn't. He didn't even phase him. He said, "Fuck the system." He said, "Fuck the system." I'm just like. <laughs> Fuck me, man. That's a badass. And I'm just like, fuck that. My my standards for badass is so warped living here. Cause like you see that in England and I'm just like, oh, it's just another fucking guy. Yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> that's, that's the key to living in Japan, right? Is to live in Japan and, and get all the good things and not piss anyone off. Yeah, we're not saying to break the rules in Japan but, <laughs> to be a badass. But, Don't do that. But do whatever the fuck you want. Like as yeah. long as you're not hurting anyone and you're, yeah. not, you're not breaking any rules, do what you want. Yeah. yeah. Japan is such a depressing place if you follow every single goddamn minute rule. Yeah. Mm. Doesn't need to be followed. Yeah, but that's the thing, right? And and I feel that's why Japan is one of those few countries that does birth some of the the craziest looking and the craziest acting and just like the most like unique type of people because you need to be like that in order to fucking feel like you're living. Sometimes it's, yeah? it's, it's weird because it, it it seems like it's either one way or the other. It's such mm. a it's such an extreme, right? Yeah. Which is why like whenever I like. Japan's famous for having like very low crime rates, right? Mm. But for some reason, when, whenever you hear about a crime being committed here, it's the most- It's fuck a fucking crime. It's the most <laughs> fucked up demented shit I've like ever heard. Like no. what the fuck? Yeah, it's like the other day it happened, right? On the order queue line. There was yeah, that yeah. guy who like went on and just like stabbed 10 people. <laughs> yeah. Cause he was like, I just wanted to. And I'm like- She's like the women are happy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Cause yeah, he's yeah. like, I wanted to stab happy women. I'm like, what? <laughs> what, what, like, 
just just fucking rob a like hold up a corner shop or something, yeah. man. Like you, you never hear about someone like yeah. holding up like Steal a corner a shop. Steal grandma's purse or something, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like something <laughs> simple. Uh, I, I just, I just yeah, there's just so many people who like idolize uh, Japan in that way. And I think, mm. you know, you have to be realistic about it. Like I remember I saw, I was with Chris and there was this, uh, he was on Facebook reading an article or something. Yeah. And there was a post someone made on Facebook. It was like, did you know Japan has the least amount of exams in the world? And it was like, yeah, but only for a specific age group. And then they yeah. fuck them to death with exams. Yeah, 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 they yeah, literally yeah. ruin their life. Yeah. They don't get to yeah. do anything other than exam and study. Like yeah. it's like, oh great, great. They get to have one year where they get to run around the fields and have fun. And then we fuck them to death yeah, with exactly. exams, you know? It's, <laughs> You know, the amount of pressure on people to succeed in exams here. I don't know anyone who went to a fucking cram school in the UK. Are you kidding me? I don't even have cram. I'm sure there is one. I don't know where yeah. it is. Yeah. I don't know anyone else who went to one. I, and most people had a private tutor once a week or something like that. Yeah. And even then it was like, wow, you have a private yeah, it was tutor. Like, oh, yeah, 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 this kid, yeah, fucking yeah. hell. Like, education not good enough for you? All right, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, Five like, days of school, not enough for you, huh? Yeah, it's just like- <laughs> I say that as I went to Saturday school. Yeah, just, know, right? You know, there is a lot of, uh, harsh realities about Japan that is mm. o overlooked because we want it to be this rosy and beautiful place that yeah. is lived which up to it, all our which expectations. It is. Which it is. In, In a many lot of aspects. aspects it is, yes, yeah. It but is. I feel like we're looking, we're, we're lucky enough to not have to be part of the Japanese system. No, we, we, we avoid the, Probably some of the worst aspects, which is yeah. working in Japan. Mm. Yeah, you know, I think uh, we work in Japan in the most comfortable way ever. Yeah, and we're it's, working it's, right now. Technically, it's great. <laughs> I can just sit on my ivory tower, looking down on all these peasants and telling them, "Oh, you should stop doing that. That's not good." <laughs> You should try working from home. <laughs> Have you heard of that? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I saw, wasn't there- It's a new yeah. hip thing with the young people well, nowadays. Wasn't there a thing where they wanted to get people to come back into work? Yeah. And like a lot of the workers were like, please, God, no, we want to keep teleworking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. We've discovered the beauty of that is teleworking. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's, if anyone was going to love teleworking, it was going to be Japan. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my God, it's like- <laughs> it's, 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 it's kind of like mind blowing that it's taken this long for them to adopt it, honestly. Have you been on a Japanese Zoom call? Yeah, unfortunately. Oh my God, have you been on one? Yeah, I have. Oh my God, I, I was like, whoa, where's the fun guys? Come on, talk a little bit. Like no one said anything. <laughs> I got on the call, we were there for like five minutes and no one said anything because they were waiting for one more person. Yeah, yeah. We were all just standing there with our yeah. cameras on. I was like, ah. Uh. So the summer, right? Like, no, no, am I in the I'm right like, please, room? please. I'm not. I'm just like, please. Someone talk about the weather. Just, just, yeah. just, just, just talk about the weather, please. Like, I know it's been basic as fuck. I, I but felt like I was yeah. waiting for my turn to go on a game show or something. <laughs> where everyone was just nervous. Like, no one said anything. And then, even then, it was like everyone would like someone would say something. I don't know how. I've been on Zoom calls with like Americans, and it's so much more chill. Yeah, obviously, because I'm, you know, whatever. But I remember there was like there was one call I had, and there was five of us, and one person would say something. And they would just wait like 30 seconds, like process it. And they would be like, <laughs> and I'd be like, <laughs> I'm like, guys, this is, this is in a courtroom. This is a fucking Zoom call. <laughs> no, right. well, I saw, you know, they would, uh, in America, they would publish some of the, a lot of the Zoom court proceedings. Yeah. And I said, that was, that was more, more jovial fun going on in those than on these Zoom calls that I was having. I would, I would just stand there. It was so I mean, like jovial, like, more, more fun, court, more, more fun, more fun. Having, having the having judge fun. is like guilty. J.K. <laughs> <laughs> got I you know, just a few, <laughs> few jokes cracked here and there. A few, uh, you know, even the judge would be like, "How's the day going? How oh, good, good, good." Anyway, yeah. so this is far proceeding number. And, you know, <laughs> anyway, <even> why? Yeah. <laughs> I just thought I used the weirdest thing that there was just like this uh, weird understanding that no one was allowed to talk until everybody got on the Zoom call. Mm, yeah, like no, if they were because early, it's all about procedure here. It and if it's not so according strange. to procedure then it's just chaos and panic. Yeah, I was just like, this is the this is the most uh, like unfun Zoom call of my life. <laughs> not that Zoom calls were fun. Not that, not that I expected <laughs> no, not to be that fun, Zoom calls are fun. But anyway. I didn't expect it to be like, all right, I'm waiting for my hostage person to, to <laughs> tell my family about how much they're gonna ask for ransom. I'm waiting know? for the godfather to enter the room That's before I, I can say felt, anything. Yeah, it felt like something, uh, <laughs> like there was some kind of like like spiritual ritual about to take, take place and no one was allowed to talk. It was so strange. Like a seance. <laughs> it was so strange. I was like, what is this? <laughs> Anyway, I think that's a good place to wrap it up. What a good episode. What a, what a good what a episode. Fun episode. I like how we episode. talked about uh, toxic clickbait, but uh, as uh, the, the title you probably read was complete clickbait. We don't hate our fans. Hey. Can, can, you, can you believe Got that Trash Taste half. made some toxic clickbait? We did the toxic clickbait that I, I warned not to do. We did it to prove a point. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's what we're telling ourselves. No, we, we just want to prove a That's what we're telling ourselves. We just want to prove a point. We just want to prove a point. Joey, do, do the fucking Patreon shout out thing, Bobby. Okay, we'll do the Patreon shout out. Look at all the patrons though. Amazing. They, they, they fell for the clickbait, but it's all right. They still support us because they're on our Patreon. And, oh, if, yeah, you, and if you don't care about our clickbaity 
ask, then make sure to go over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash great outro. Yeah. Great outro. <laughs> also, follow subscribe. Us. Yeah, also follow subscribe. us on Twitter, send us some memes on the subreddit, and if you hate our face, listen to us on Spotify. Subscribe, yeah. subscribe, subscribe. Yeah, and, and uh, subscribe. that's been another episode of Trash Taste. We love our fans. We love our We're fans. We're just letting you I know. you beautiful bastards. Um, yeah. Take jo- that from Phil. JoJo Fuck fans, Phil. please stop sucking dick. <laughs> um, not Never all, stop. Not, Never stop. Not, not Never all, stop. Please sucking dick. Not all dicks need to be sucked <laughs> in the world. JoJo <laughs> fans like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> I feel attacked. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye.